water. Uh, we have, do we have anybody on the Zoom? Doesn't look like we do, right? No, we do. We have two. Well, they're not showing up on the screen then. Um, oh, there's Sandy. We have Sandy. And Shelly's not showing up because she's just by phone. Someone okay. needs to hit got it. Okay. Can you hear us all right, Sandy? Are you on the Zoom? I'm not on Zoom. Thumbs up. Okay. Oh, it's back there. Very impressive with the owl. I can see all of you. <laughs> well, we'll see how impressive it is in a few minutes when we all start talking at the same time. But it's very, it's very interesting from uh, from our seats here as well. Uh, so welcome, Sandy. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. And do we have any amendments to the agenda, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Phil, do you want to amend the agenda? Oh, um, yeah, let's, uh, I have the um, easement for the CV fiber um, right away to be able to do construction um, up by the town garage, yep. and I, I forwarded it to Sarah earlier. I don't know, did you print that out, Sarah? Uh, no. I no, okay. And I, I wasn't sure, um, you know, I told uh, the consultant who's handling the easement work that we had a meeting tonight that I'd bring it to the board, but I couldn't, I, I didn't know where we were in the process right now, if we still needed to uh, actually send it to Rob to look at or whether we might take action on it tonight. But, you know, just, a, just a basic straightforward easement, forward. yeah. Look, I mean, yeah. I mean, so many feet by so many feet with some description of where it is. Yeah. yeah exactly. I don't think we need to send that. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. You don't, do you not worry that it's an actionable item that was in the board that's a legal document? Oh, oh because we don't have a warrant? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah probably we need to wait to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a warrant item, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I'll get back to her and tell her, you know, that we, yep. we considered it. We'll take action at the next meeting, but... I mean, I think as far as we're concerned, they can go ahead and do make ready and prep, and but once we authorize it in at the next meeting, they well, can let's go just ahead and start when we when we get down to the end of our regular agenda, let's just read the language on the easement into the record, and so we can all hear it and make sure nobody has it. Okay. Yeah. Any objection? Yeah. Good idea. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, it's 505. We're, we're almost right on time. Reviewing and possible approving of townwide vote, a 2023 town meeting updating the Middlesex land use development regulations presented to the select board on August 2nd, 2022. Action possible. So um, I have heard from no one, select board member or other member of the community, suggesting any changes uh, any changes to the draft regulations, and we had no uh, input uh, at our public hearing with regard to any changes. Um, I read it very carefully a month or six weeks ago. I read it quickly again uh, over the weekend, and I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. And I reviewed the, I also reviewed the uh, the presentation uh, that was done to us, which gave the highlights of the changes, and I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. So I don't know if anybody else has anything. If we make any, as you as you all know, if if we decide to make any substantial changes, then we have to have another public hearing. Yeah. It's so just some grammatical you. thing or editorial thing. We can we can do that. Right. But I, I really, I could not, I could not see anything, and I don't know if anybody else. I went through it once fast before the last time we met. We we're going to talk about. It. Then I went through it again, much slower. And neither time, I didn't, I didn't see anything that caused me any concern. What was very helpful is the, is the summary of the changes uh, that was in that presentation. Because when, when I read through the document, I lose track of what the changes are and what's the way it's always been, which makes it a little confusing. Right. So with that, is someone willing to uh, make an appropriate motion? Sandy, can I, can I just ask a question before we go there? Sure. 
Um, one of the one of the changes um, revolves around uh, unit size and and making it more basically streamlining streamlining the approval process for three to six units, and then it's, there's a cutoff there and the seven or more. Just wondering, like, is there a reason that the the cutoff is is where it is, and and what what's behind that? Um, the the cutoff, you know, overall is based on, you know, what does the town plan say in terms of what do we want for each of the zoning districts? Um, you know, higher higher density housing or or lower density housing, and uh, the we we open, you know, made it easier to build, you know, smaller multifamily. I think it's the the, the Three or four units. I don't remember the cutoffs. You have it. You you just said what they were. Um, recognizing farmhouses can be subdivided. We need to have homes for you know families starting out. They, those can often be good places for them. When you start moving into seven seven unit, that's more like you know more of an apartment building out in a rural area, and there should be you know greater review of that. That it the thinking was more along those lines, in line with sort of the goals that are set forth in the town plan. Okay. Yeah, I looked at I looked at that too, Randy. I mean, I, that's where that's where I get in trouble when I look at those because I say, well, why did we draw the line there instead of somewhere else? Or why did we but yeah, I was you gotta draw the, you gotta <laughs> So so in the world I live in, you know, there's some cl very clear distinctions between, you know, what's considered um an actual multifamily building based from the Department of Energy and whatnot. And, and that distinction was, you know, a, a five unit building. And I was just wondering if the effort was trying to match up with that and and uh, and we were just off base or what what the consideration for that cutoff was. So um, the, the description that you gave and, and trying to say, you know, uh, looking at changing over a, a farmhouse or something like that or that style of housing um uh, it's it's good enough for me anything else anyone sandy would you be willing to uh refresh our mind on uh i know you, you had something in there i don't have it in front of me now but about uh uh which i can understand 25 percent slope is a limit the is a cutoff limit for building and then the other thing is uh, you're trying to protect the ridge line. Is there an elevation that you can't, in town, that you can't uh, uh, build on? Yeah, I think there was, but I can't remember. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, there is. There is. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I think there's additional review for development on 25 percent. Um, I mean, I don't understand why anybody would want to build on a 25% slope, but. So here's, here's what it says. 3.11 says, development shall not take place on slopes, slope gradients in excess of 25% with the exception of limited site improvements necessary to facilitate development on contiguous land with less than a 25% gradient. Required agricultural practices and acceptable forestry practices are exempt from this section in accordance with section 7.3. Is that like a driveway or something? That's, yeah, that's what it would seem to imply. Yeah. Or yeah, like, like, like somebody has a flat piece of land up another. above and they would say, yeah. System maybe over there. Right, right, right. Development doesn't just mean building. I know that nope. I know that the, the slope issue came up. Be, I mean, in, in part because of, of drainage and water, you know, water impacts on steep slopes become very become difficult to manage. Okay. So the other one is there is that altitude limitation somewhere in here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, I'm looking. Days. Uh, non There's nothing under altitude. Uh, yeah, I don't. It doesn't jump right out at me, unfortunately. 
But I remember 2,500 feet. Does that sound right? I could look it up. I don't remember on the top yeah. of the Access driveway front edge converter chain of the purchase requirements. Yeah, so you have to come up with a lot of requirements. I'm looking, I'm doing a search on bridge lines on the document. Okay. And, um, ensure that no buildings are placed on steep slopes or extended above the height of land, highest point of any prominent bridge line or hilltop, and that is. Section 6.1, subdivision lot density calculations. So it's still one. Yeah, that's gotcha. more than the house being above the top of the ridge line. Right. Think above it, continue the tower on top of the ridge line either. Oh. It's under section F, natural and scenic resource protection. I'm almost there. But is there a specific elevation restriction? I don't think no. you know. No, it's, like it's not about the elevation. It's the ridge line. Yeah, not about the, hot, the ridge line. Yeah. So we would be, in your opinion, uh, kind of like in the situation where um, Worcester recently wanted to put up a, I think it was a cell tower. We wouldn't be able to do that either. Well, we've had um, restrictions on cell towers in our, in our, we have that in our existing zoning. Um, and I think that there's a, a tower overlay district that's in our zoning now. And I think we carried that forward into this new proposal um, that covers for towers, you know, above a certain elevation. Um, I don't remember now what that elevation is. And then also, you know, the, the ridge lines up on Dumpling Hill. So that's a specific overlay district just for cell towers. Would it be fair to say that, uh, that the uh, NCS tower uh, on uh, between East Hill and McCullough Hill Road would still be allowed? That is still allowed. That's not within the overlay district. And actually, there, I believe there's a proposal going forward to increase the height of that. To reduce the height of it? Increase. To increase it. Huh? To increase it. Increase, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the tower area was more the, the, the Worcester Range area where there's not the development, as well as Dumpling Hill, which is the hill that's right by the Romney School. Yeah, I'm good with that. So, Peter, you need a motion? Yes. Uh, let's see. After reviewing, uh, make a motion that we approve uh, the Middlesex Land Use and Development Regulations. Uh, for a town-wide vote on the town meeting in 2023. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Bill, thank you. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Whoop. Go ahead, Sandy. Can we, Sandy. Add, can, we, can we just provide to go through it one more time as a proofreader? Because I think there were still some grammatical errors that got left in there. Sure. I mean, I, I think that's that's allowed anyway, isn't it? Minor grammatical corrections or whatever. Yeah. Um, so the motion passes. Thank you, Sandy. Congratulations. The plan is on track. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Okay, considering a subcommittee recommendation that a certain architectural firm responding to a request for proposals conduct a feasibility study of the current town hall action likely. So I believe the way this goes is that the subcommittee is going to make a recommendation to us and we 
presumably yeah, accept that recommendation just, or not. I, I think we want to wait for Dave Megida. He was expecting to come at 5.30. Okay. Is he, he's not on, is he, Sarah? Oh, yeah. Okay, no, I'd like to wait for him. him. Okay. So can we go to maybe 6.05, reviewing the town? All right, well, let's, let's see. We, we've got a couple of things we can do here. Do we know if Ruben is coming or not? He cannot come until 7 o'clock on November 15th, possibly. 7 o'clock on November 15th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do we want to talk about the speeding ordinance or implementation of a social media policy? What's your pleasure? Well, they're both so exciting. Yeah. Let's talk about the speeding. Let's talk Everybody's about the speeding. favorite subject. So, I read through all that stuff and it gave There's me a, a headache. a lot about I speed. Yeah. But I did, just, just before we, we dig into the, into the meat of it, I did, all of a sudden, one, one interesting thing did, did jump out at me. Let me find it here. So on page nine of this long document, it says, generally speaking, the Vermont Agency of Transportation Traffic and Safety Division does not recommend setting speed limits on class three gravel roads. Most people tend to drive on gravel roads at speeds slower than what towns might have set. Not true behind me. The, tra <laughs> the, the, traffic, the traffic engineering survey is a reasonable method for helping you make an informed decision about the proper speed for a particular road. No one criteria by itself determines reasonable and safe. Anyway, I thought that was interesting with that. What page was that? That is page nine. Nine? So, determining the speed, paragraph three. That kind of surprised me. Well, Steve Martin and I both drive slower than the speed limit. I generally drive slower than the speed limit, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get But you're a race car driver. <laughs> I almost got killed last night by a teenage rally driving while I was biking. Well, Horn of the Moon Road. In when, when, the road when the road behind my house, East Hill Road, is the way it is now, Honest to God, it's like a super highway. They come down that hill at 50 or 60 miles an hour. It's crazy. Fix that for you. So are we considering, um, what are we doing? We're just reviewing? Well, what, we're, try what we're trying to figure out is the path forward, because as we know right now, we can't enforce our speeding, uh, our speeding ordinance because we're improperly posted and improperly okay. done and, and all that. So. Um, what we were afraid we were going to hear, and we did hear, and Sarah's probably going to say it again, is that to redo all that, we need to do a traffic study, okay. which involves, of course, money, time, trouble, effort, all of the do we above. Know, do we know how long we've been out of compliance? Probably forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever, I mean, we thought we were in compliance, Randy. Yeah. But when you really read through it, where, where, we, where we fouled up was, when I believe, and help me out here, when we actually posted the roads, like we have that ordinance that Sarah sent us and it spells out, you know, what the speed limits are, but we didn't put, like you're supposed to put signs so many feet before where the speed change it, you know, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. We never complied with that. We just, we just didn't do it. We put signs where the change was, but we didn't put signs put ahead of where the change was. You didn't put warning. Warning signs yeah. that the speed limit is going to change, or what? Or right, 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 right. So, I would tell you, from what I know now, we've never been in compliance. Now, and I'll get to you in a minute, Sarah. I mean, what begs the question for me in looking all in all this is, and I know this is maybe it's because it's the midterm elections, and I'm a little hypersensitive to all this political stuff, but. What's the point of doing this if we can't enforce the speed anyway? Which clearly right now we can't. Um, go ahead, Sarah. Then go ahead. So why hire a sheriff? Okay, so um, 
I had a conversation with our, uh, Christian Meyer at Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. He's the guy who would do a, would, would uh, be involved with this. So here's the deal. The way it works is that you don't post speeds for all the roads. You just post for the most, the most problematic roads. Otherwise, you have a blanket speed limit. Um, for roads that are of issue, the measurement you know, for the traffic study is the 15th fastest person becomes the benchmark. So if they do a study of 100 cars, you get to the 80, everybody 85 and below is that's that's where you draw the line and what the and what the benchmark speed limit should be. So if people are driving a certain road at the uh, you know at the at 15th. Let's say it's like you try to set it at 35. I gotta get my brain brain around this. The 15th if the 15th fa fa fastest person is at 35 miles an hour, then that's where you set the speed limit. It's also in your thing. It doesn't have anything to do with who's the first fastest. <laughs> it does not. Uh, so I was going to volunteer to try and put that fast. And then the. Um, Wait, are you talking about using one of those things that they're going to put little speed? things across? Yeah. The road? No, yeah. it's just then you don't know that you're 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 not being told what to drive. No, you're yeah. not being this told what to drive. This is just, just, just the core. They're just going to measure. They're going to take measurements over certain roads, and the yeah. certain roads are the ones that you tonight or eventually decide which of the roads you want measured. Otherwise, you just set a blanket speed limit for various roads. Uh, you can set uh, 25 miles an hour, but do it judiciously and for paces with high uh, density where, where people ride bikes or the schools. So talking to Christian about his schedule and getting together a budget, it looks like they were not going to be able to do any type of traffic study until the summer because once the snow falls, their equipment gets ruined, and then it's mud season, and blah, blah, blah. So his recommendation, he's gonna come back to the board, depending on what you decide, how many roads you would like measured, and give us a quote to put in for the budget starting after the, the July 1st fiscal year, if you're interested in that. And what, how much does it cost? I don't know, he's gonna, he's, it depends. If you say we want one road, or you say you want five roads, you, you know, you work, you decide what roads you want measured. I thought we'd done this before. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. There. I know, but I mean, in my time on the board. We That's didn't so we have, about it. We have we talked about but we didn't it. actually we hire, okay. It. For the same reason. I thought it was like $7,000 or something, or maybe I'm making Well, let's hope, that I don't know. Like so if you pick one road, you just decide to do Shady Rill, or just decide to do Shady Rill and Brook Road, that's going to be very different than doing Shady Rill, Brook Road, Center Road. Well, in looking, you know, in, in looking at the list in our current speed, I think that's pretty much the list. Okay. I mean, we need to go, we need to go through it, but, you know, certainly it's going to be Brook Road, certainly it's going to be Center Road. Culver Hill Road, of course, might be a question, but... That road's impassable most of the time. Anyway, okay, East Hill Road, Molly Simple Hill, Portal Road, Shady Rill, Three Mile Bridge Road, and West Hill Road. I mean, I think those. Peter, 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 this is Pinky. Could I can I make a comment? Yep. Yes. Um, we, uh, the Planning Commission, uh, dealt with this a little bit when we were doing the work in the Middlesex Village. And as Sarah explained, it was you know super helpful. And I also read through the um, the guidance from VTrans. There's a risk that you have. I'll take Peter's East Hill Road for example. If 85% of the people who drive down East Hill Road are driving down East Hill Road at 50 miles an hour, you cannot realistically set the speed limit to 35 miles an hour. So the traffic study might actually support higher speed limits rather than lower speed limits. Right. And I, so that, that's one, one thing to think about. And the, the other piece is, you know, maybe the select board has a policy that roads be maintained to support travel at the speed limit that's desired, which may be, you know, 35 or 40 or in accordance with the highway ordinance that you have. Yeah. Because I think the, um, the, the guidance from VTran says people drive at the speed the road is safe to drive at. And if you widen and straighten Or maybe, the road, excuse me, but or maybe just a little faster, sometimes way faster. But, you know, I, I mean, using East Hill as an example, my favorite, my favorite example, there are times when it isn't safe to drive 10 miles an hour on East Hill, and there are other times when it's safe to drive 60 miles an hour. So when do you do your traffic study? You're not going to do it in the winter, that's for darn sure. You're not going to do it in mud season, that's 
unlikely. So you're going to do it when the road is maybe very similar to the way it is today, which is like a super highway. I think that's I think that's the point that Sandy's trying to make right, is right. that that by the time you hit that good weather and we do that study, you very well could, you know, impact it in the exact opposite way that you want it to. Um, you know, I, I look at this and, and you know, you hear people always talk about, oh, you, you know, somebody almost ran me off the road or, oh, they're driving fast, you know. Uh, how fast is fast? It's all subjective. None of us are, you know, what's fast to you might not be fast to me. Um, or vice uh, versa, uh, Randy. Exactly. So, um, you know, I, I'm just curious about how big is the problem that, that we have, really. Um, yeah. You know, if we, if we go through the efforts, we spend the money on the, on the traffic studies, and we go through this whole effort just so we can enforce it, are we going to get more coverage? Nope. Well, that's exactly if, what if I we can't said enforce 15 it, minutes ago. Is this, right. is this a fool's, uh, is this in a way a fool's errand? Is yeah. there a problem with just keeping the signs up as they are? I think, you're, I think if you leave the signs up the way that they are, people are going to drive, they're going to see the signs. The majority of the folks are going to try to abide by those limits. And the people that are going to exceed those limits are probably going to exceed them whether or not we've gone through all this effort to make it enforceable or not. And then when they do, are we going to have a, a sheriff sitting around to actually enforce it? No. <clears throat> I was yeah, here. No. I was here the day the sheriff came in the last time. This was before COVID. He said the problem is the like he had just come from Shady Rill, and he said the roads don't match up. You talk about one speed limit of 30 miles an hour, which it's posted differently when you go by the school. It's posted. He said the posting doesn't match with the ordinance, and that's why they can't write the ticket. Right. right. So either his suggestion is we change the ordinance to match the correct description, because he says I can't write it because your ordinance isn't speaking the right information. Right. Well, we the the, the ordinance has blank statements, like it says. <clears throat> Well, there's more than one speed, according to what he told me, there's more than one speed limit sign on Shady Rill. There's a school there. He one said, that's the problem. And he said, it's not so much, I don't know if you have to rewrite your ordinance so much as to make it correct to what you have posted is more or less what he relayed to me. Yeah. Or move the signs. Well, isn't, isn't, isn't the difference the, it's, it's 30 miles an hour around Romney School and for a ways either side. That's a school zone. And that, that I think that's uh, uh, enforced by the fact that it's a school zone. And then you get down the hill a little bit farther. I don't know if it's 35 or 40 down towards the bridge. Right. But this just says it's 30 miles an hour from the intersection of West Hill Road. And again, he said that's not even the name that's on the road sign. I think right. he told me. Right. So he said that's the problem. It, it yeah. does none of this is matching what. So he can't write a ticket to that, it. That I think. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Doesn't require some careful measurement and some some improved description. But I mean, I think we could do that relatively easily. I don't see that as I mean I don't I don't see that as a big hurdle. The question is, is it going to require a traffic study if that involves changing the speed limit on different sections of the road? And I think it's going to. I think it does. Yeah. Right. So but I think we're in. I think we're in for a traffic study. But my my question is just going back a little bit and talking about use of town resources and money and all those issues. I went over. Uh, it was probably in August, and I sat over in Putnamville at the morning at drive time just to see if I could tell what the effect of our flashing signs was. And I would tell you people slow down. They don't, not every one of them slows down, but it's substantially different than the way I remember it. So that makes me think, you know, maybe we need to buy four or six of the portable signs with the flashing lights and put those around and maybe that's more effective than anything else we can do. 
I don't know the answer to that, but I'm just <laughs> wondering if we're not taking an obsolete, backward, old-fashioned approach to, uh, to this by But we got to make it. We got to make it so we can enforce it. Right. Well, I think the first place to start is probably getting the road names correct on the yeah. ordinance. Yeah. And the speed limit signs. Right. If it's truly accurate. more than one speed limit on that sign, you're not. I don't think you have to do a traffic study because it's already posted at that. So he's just saying for them to write a ticket, they have your ordinance has to match. What's actually there? Which makes What's sense. there? So we could amend the ordinance. I would assume names. you don't need to do a traffic study to amend it right. to what yeah. it currently is. Right. Only if we wanted to change the. Only if you wanted, wanted to change, change something. Right. Well, I would I would suggest to start out with the approach might be to say we're not changing the speed. We're just we're just clarifying and straightening out our ordinance, right. and then get the get the uh, sheriff in here and say, okay, are we good now or no? Or, or do we need to do a tra traffic study? Our position is we have not changed the speed limit on any of the roads. We've clarified yeah. where it is. I think I Whether that'll that. work or not, I don't know. But I mean, that, that I think is a relatively easy thing to do. Um, and this doesn't have, and then there are roads that don't have speed limits right right because they weren't a part of this original study because these were in a study right and then but we picked the roads to be in the study yeah we picked the roads to be in the study and then the other roads just don't have speed limit signs right okay man we can't i mean if I mean, these are main you want to go anyway, 50 but... miles an hour down the class four road there's no way yeah, we yeah, can yeah. enforce that yeah okay but we still have to go through the ordinance process of updating it and advertising it and everything. If you want to do that, just give me the direction so that we can start warning it that way. Well, someone needs to go well, and I check it. I think we need to do an inventory of how roads are posted and what the correct, you know, road I think we need like to, I think we need to correct, correct the description first. Isn't that the first step? Well, yeah. I, why not just take, take and compare the two and if we determine that we need to clarify names at that point, we can do that all at the same time. But I think we should be making sure that the, that the, the posted limit on the road sign and the ordinance match up at the same time. So it seems like run an inventory of what all of what the roads are posted at, see if it matches here, check the names, and if, then change it all at once. Oh yeah, I, I, I agree. I, but make sure, make sure that the description matches the area where yep. it's posted yeah are we going to find that there's signs that are not on here <laughs> like that someone randomly put up well we'll find out <laughs> you want. Or and then what happens well, i don't think so because it wasn't it Shut wasn't up. it last year or the previous year that all the signs got changed uh, a couple years ago yeah the question i would have though is it's kind of like remember when we put the uh flashing sign in in uh, Putnamsville? Yes. So now, they remember it was a big deal and we had to move it? Yes, that was terrible. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> yeah, and anyways, um, but I don't know if the same regulation applies to town roads, because you know it's a state, oh, right. thing, a state thing. Because you have, remember the issue was that we we're putting a, a 35 in and we had it in the 50 zone. So you have to put a sign up, reduce speed ahead. Right. So I don't know if we have to do that. On, I don't know. I don't know either, Victor. I don't have the answer. But I think, I think the, all I'm saying is, and I think Randy and I are saying the same thing, is to get this language to match what's really out there mm -hmm. is the first step. Right. And there are probably some signs, I don't know, but they're usually every time I go around, there's some signs that are missing, especially after winter, they get knocked down or whatever, and they don't get replaced. Yeah. I, I believe there was something about you know, there has that. to be a sign every certain feet. Like you can't go a certain distance without. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I also think you can't change a speed limit within a certain time, you know distance. Right. So it can't go right. Isn't that type of it. So do you want me to call the sheriff's office so we can just drive around? Do you want me to just give me some direction what you want me to do with this? 
It's up to us to take that inventory, right? I mean, yeah, they're not going to take the inventory yeah, for us. us. No, but I mean, at least we could, you know, the sheriff's probably. I, I would suggest that, that you know, um, we take the inventory, um, check the names, and then at that point, before we make any changes, we could grab somebody and say, this is what we're trying to do, this is what we found. Do you have any insight? This is what exists right now. Yeah. yeah. And then we can go through the warning of the ordinance yeah. procedure because that's got to be advertised and you have to hear every hearing. Call. I think I have the sheriff's name that I spoke to downstairs and the notes he gave me of what the issues were. Okay. Yeah. This says a traffic engineering study is required to lower or raise existing right. speed yeah. limits. So our position is we're not changing them, we're just right. clarifying. Right. What is whether that ultimately will wash or not, who knows? But because somebody's going to look at this and look at the new one and say, "Oh yeah, but you, what you've effectively done is change the speed limit here or there, or who knows what." But I think mostly it's clarification. Like you look at Brook Road, a maximum of 30 miles an hour from the intersection of Center Road and traveling east to the intersection of Center Road. Well, that's pretty much right. He said his biggest one was Shady Grove Road. Mm. Yeah, because it changes. Yeah. Well, no, but because the names, the road names aren't accurate. Well, we've so. changed the way we, right, we've changed the way our road signs work. I, I still don't understand how that happened, but we did it anyway. Now Center Road goes all the way up to the bottom of Shady Rill, and then East Hill Road starts at that intersection. Correct. It always used to be East Hill Road went to the intersection where it came up the hill, so Center Road grabbed a hunk of East Hill Road, and I never understood how that happened. But anyway. So, oh, is there an action? All right, let's move on. Well, the action is, I guess, I guess, I would request our uh, road foreman under the careful and diligent supervision. Yeah, what's <laughs> <laughs> I saw the rain on the wall. I was looking right at you when I said it. See, he saw it. After Randy, too. Take notes. I saw that one a while away. But I mean, in, look, in looking at this quickly, reality. I don't think it is that bad. No, reality is we should actually have a sign inventory done at the town anyway. So. Yeah. And we'll get a new sign. Soon. Peter, can you just finish that statement? You said you're going to request the road foreman under the road, do what? Inventory the road? No, don't, 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 don't. It's don't, not a motion. Don't, 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 don't quote me, no. It's a motion. Like but I'm, but I'm, just, I'm just saying, Eric, our faithful road foreman with a little bit of time, I think, could fix this. And also at the same time be even more familiar than he already is with our road system. We'll and if, if that turns out to be a horrible thing, come back to us and we'll figure out what to do about it. If, if, if you need help with that, I'll help you with it. Oh, OK, thanks. No, two, two eyes, two yeah. One of you can drive and the other has the clipboard. Right. Yeah. Right. If you need help, I'll do it. Okay. So we're good on that one? So I think we are ready to go back. Welcome, sir. Thank you for coming, David. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming, David. Um, we are ready to go back to considering a subcommittee's recommendation that a certain architectural firm responding to a request for proposals conduct a feasibility study of the current town hall action likely. And what I was in the middle of saying when we decided to wait for your arrival, because for once in our career we were ahead of schedule, which is always <laughs> unusual. Um, as I believe this, this process goes, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are going to make a recommendation to us, and then we accept that recommendation or ask for reconsideration or who knows what we do. But let's take it one step at a time. So what we're looking for is a report from you guys. You reviewed the proposals, um, what you're recommending. Right. Do you want to? Right. You want me to start? <laughs> OK, sure. So um, is Sandy, are you still on? I Oh, she's still on. So Sandy, um, she's still here. okay, good. Hi, Sandy. Let's see your face because you're part of the subcommittee. So Sandy and um, Dave Megida, uh, who had, I, as you know, we had reached out to him a few months ago just in this whole process when we were looking for the CDBG grant. Um, 
uh, Dave has been really helpful in um, sort of guiding us through this <coughs> process. Um, and with the recommendation from the board, um, we went, uh, uh, Sandy and Dave worked on an RFP um, that was submitted to a list of about 15 different architects. And um, we got a miraculous five, which was really great. We were really impressed by the number of people who responded um, to the RFP. Um, so it was our job to um, review the five and be really looking at, we had a, we had a rubric um, to look at in terms of, um, you know, how these uh, architect uh, firms scored. Um, some of the things that we were looking at were things like, do they have experience with municipalities? Have they done buildings, municipal buildings? Have they worked in Vermont? Because some of them, you know, had more experience outside of the state. So do they understand small towns, um, small Vermont towns? Um, and how well did they sort of respond to the RFP and and the um, and what we were looking for um, in in a report or, or what they they could do for a study? Um, Dave, you met with them. Uh, people came to the town hall. Robert, the opportunity yep. to have town hall. Yeah. And and how many took up, took you up I think on that? Four offer? firms showed up. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and, you know, so they were able to see the town and get a little better sense. Dave was available for questions. Um, and, uh, and then, so basically, because I was quite the lay person, um, and Sandy somewhat also of a lay person in terms of looking at these proposals, what was challenging for, for us, um, it was easy for us to go through and say, oh, look, they got these awards. The, these are the projects that they've worked on. Um, these are their sort of educational, um, you know, their, uh, you know, credentials. Um, that part was easy. What was hard was sort of looking at what they were going to do in their scope of work and compare that to um, the cost of the scope of work. Because as you know, when you saw them, um, there were a number of, um, you know, this is what you sort of base prices and then there are add-ons. And as a layperson, I didn't know, you know, what, what add-ons are required, what would we want to do as add-ons. So Dave was really helpful in helping us sort of parse out what, what are we looking at? What is the bare minimum that we want to do here? Um, and, and also, you know, Dave asked some really good questions like, well, how soon do you want to do this? Like, if you're going to be do making changes to the town hall, whether it's rebuilding a town hall or doing rehabilitation or building a new town hall, whatever it is that we are deciding to do, if this is 10 years down the road, we don't want to spend all this money doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and so, um, you know, in the end, all of the things that they mentioned are things that would eventually have to get done. But for the purposes of this, um, what we sort of narrowed it down to was that we didn't want to present to the townspeople um, sort of plug in numbers without really doing a, an evaluation of the town hall that we think is, is necessary. Um, we didn't want to say to the, to, to you know, just uh, present at town meeting. This is what we've done, and this is what hypothetically are the problems, or this is what hypothetically it would cost to, to do X, Y, and Z. So, um, so we we narrowed it down to um, two firms, um, and then uh, we interviewed them um, and sat down with them for about an hour each. Um, to, to sort of get their take on, on you know, some of the questions that like Sandy and I had from that layperson standpoint of like, well, what is this, what is this structural engineering thing that you would do, or what is the civil engineering piece of this, and why would we want to do it, or why wouldn't we want to do it, that kind of thing, um, and um, and we um, and chime in anytime, Dave, um, please, if if I'm missing anything, or Sandy, if if I'm missing anything. Um, and uh, so, so we sat down with each of them, um, and those two that we, uh, which um, I told you guys about, were Black River Design and um, Vermont uh, uh, Integrated. Integrated architect. In a, integrated architect. Integrated, yeah. I want to say integrated, but integrated architect, right? Um, so between the the the, the two. Um, 
we, uh, we felt um, sort of unanimously that uh, VIA would be providing the support um, and the professional guidance and uh, be able to communicate with our townspeople in a way that um, felt like uh, would be, um, they, they, they'd be really good representatives of, of speaking about the town hall and representing um, us in terms of our, our message to the town um, about what's going on with the town hall. Um, and what the options are um, for the town hall. Could you explain to the board previously about the three options, three different looks we want to take? Right, so we were, uh, we, go ahead, we sure. were, yeah, go ahead. One would be a renovation. After the, we select the firm, get them on board, they're gonna be meeting with the users and with the board here, the board, the select board, to look at three different options. One would be a renovation of this building, one would be a renovation of this building with perhaps a, uh, an addition to this building, and the third would be an all-new building. And those are some pretty good options. We're hoping that one of them is going to surface at the top very quickly. But we won't know that until the consultants start talking with the users and doing a code review and a structure review, et cetera, of this existing structure. Until all that's done, they cannot give us a recommendation. They've got to work through the whole process. And there's going to no doubt be more requests than we'll ever be able to afford. So they've got to uh, practice reality with these folks and the VIA, the Vermont Integrated Architecture, they're used to that process. They're used to getting far more requests than they're ever going to be able to afford. So we have to work through the very public, very kind and respectful process to talk with people, to get all our needs met at the lowest cost possible. And I think my strong recommendation throughout this whole process would be that we're not doing something with a 10-year life, we're doing something with a 50-year life or more. And there's lots of different ways you can finesse a project so that you can accommodate future renovations. We don't know what's going to be available for technology, for example, in 20 years. But we do know that we can put some trays in the ceiling so you can move wires around inexpensively. They're confident that they, I'm confident that they know how to do that. And they've done it. There's 42 other municipal sites in the state. And Dave, you did some reference checks on them as well. Do you want to share just a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Um, I don't want to disparage anybody. I want to just say that I got one of the best recommendations I ever heard in my entire career from VI, about VIA from the municipal manager of Waterbury. And he said that, uh, and I can sum this up, they have the best consulting firm of any kind I've dealt with in my 41 years. We have to, when evaluating the, the five proposals, there were some numbers that were way out there, and we spent a lot of time trying to clarify them and try to get as best we could an apples to apples comparison between the five. And even still, there's a little uh, finessing that we have to do. So. If the board approves our recommendation, we'll sit down with BIA, Sandy, Liz, myself, and anybody else who wants to join us. But I think it's a little bit of room in negotiation. But when you put everything on the table, the pricing is very similar from the, the two finalists. And we're looking in terms of, you're probably all wondering, how much is this going to cost, right? So I, I think we're, right right now, with um, VIA for um, what they recommend, it's uh, just a, just under 28000 And that's, you know, what Dave is talking about is the, you know, potential that, you know, we might be able to negotiate it down to twenty five, figure out what we, what we really need in here. Um, the other thing that, that um, I, I thought was, um, really good is that they have a lot of experience um, helping towns or working with towns on the municipal planning grants and so because we're in the middle of applying for one that's due December 1st um, we would sit down or I would Sandy's gonna be gone um, sit down with uh, with um, you know if we decide to go with VIA um, once we've figured out, you know, sort of what we're going to do with them, one of the things that they will help me do is create the budget because 
the thing about the municipal planning grant is that I can't we can't pay for things that have already been paid for and so we we talk to them to say you know so can it be that you put up billing us for certain things um, they can have done the work we just can't have paid for the work um, so that it fits if we get the municipal planning grant which is very competitive we may not get it we got it last year or two years ago so there's no guarantee that we're going to get it um, but um, but I have um, checked with Jenny at, at um, uh, uh, the CCD, or, uh, I'm, my acronyms are off, but um, the, and, and it's fine that we have, we've gone through a competitive process as far as they're concerned. Um, and uh, we just have to be careful that we're not putting things in that have already gotten paid for. So that's how they would help me. Because I'm not sure what comes first and you know what can be put off in this process. Um, we did also tell them that we're not necessarily going to be able to come to town hall, to town meeting on you know March 3rd and say here it is these are the three things um, that's we're not we're not going to make this go fast just to get it for town meeting. But what we do want to be able to present to town meeting is this this is how far we've come. Um, and this is where we are. Yeah. So um, the uh, yeah. If you want to, do you want to look at this, or you have that? Yeah. Okay, I got it. I'm just going to summarize, anyways. You're not getting construction documents. This is very early in the planning process. What you're going to get from BIA as a minimum is going to be conceptual design with some numbers behind it what it's going to cost to get that conceptual design done. And they'll include everything from their time to consultants' time to permitting costs to insurance. We'll, we'll take care of that kind of thing. They won't do insurance. We'll have to do that. But they know all the buttons that need to be pushed to make sure that the final product is darn close to what they recommended. But you're not going to have it. It's important. You're not going to have construction documents. Only after the plans they come up with are approved by this board and you give the go-ahead to do the, the next steps will they start working on design development and construction documents. So it's, it's a long process. But is it fair to say you're going to get a vision? You're not going to get a, a vision of what we want or what, what, what they They're, are recommending? The best part of their recommendation of that one quote I gave you, they were said as being extremely good listeners. So what they're going to do is they're going to listen to what the town wants. And then they're going to try to meet all your needs of what you want to have in this building through their design. That's what architects do. The good architects do it that way. They listen to what the customer wants, what the building users are going to want, and then get the blessing, in this case, from this board, say, we agree with this is the list of things we want to have accomplished. And then they'll go off and they'll put together yeah. something that's going to be kind of sexy to show you with computers today. They can do all kinds of fun stuff. But it'll give you a good feel for what you're going to get, what their recommendations are. And I'm assuming they're going to identify the deficiencies? Yes. The, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, that's why we were pushing to have the structural engineer and the civil engineer on board. It's, those are expensive items to be surprised by. So to get those things looked at initially is going to really make that number, that estimated cost number, much more uh, viable and eliminate drastic. Uh, those things can be explosive and increases in budget if you don't know about them. So, um, and I did read all the all the proposals yeah. and all the stuff. Some of it went right over my head, but I got it for the most part. The the one piece I didn't see in there, which is a question I think we're going to have to face, is, and I'm not sure it it makes sense to include that in the scope of this study, maybe it doesn't. But let's, let's say hypothetically that they come back and the cost of renovating this building is going to be more than the cost of building a new building. Yeah. So it makes sense to build a new building, hypothetically. Yeah. The piece we're not going to know is we have some town-owned land available where we could build that building other than this site. Right. How do we as a community get our arms around is it important for the town hall to be on this site? Would we consider having it on another site? Because if, we, if we're if we going to have that conversation, 
than the value of this site in this building as something to sell is going to play into the numbers. And it may be premature to start thinking about that now, but it seems to me we need to at least get some idea, and maybe that's up to the town to do that, is to have somebody come in and, and uh, I'm not sure appraisal is the right word, but do a, do a uh, what would this property sell for type of situation so we can have that number. I mean, th these guys are not going to do that. No, they specifically But we should be that. doing that. I think we should be doing that in parallel. And at the same time, at the same time, we should be thinking about, I mean, we own land over by the school. We own land down by the fire department. We own a few nice parcels of land down along the river on the Three Mile Bridge Road. That would be a great site for a town hall. Um, <laughs> I'm being Small facetious. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was Small inspecting those today, by the way. Um, but, but be thinking about that, because I just have, a, I just have a, a feeling in the back of my head that that's going to be part of this process if, if we get that, if we get to that point. And maybe, maybe it's premature to think about it now. I don't know. No, it's not premature, but I, I think you're, uh, you are definitely ahead of the information we're going to be getting. Yeah. They're going to let you know order of magnitude pricing, which one of those options is the least expensive. But in your conversations that you're going to have with us, with the subcommittee and with them, you may say, you know what, after all this talk, we don't, we're not interested in a new building. If we can do it for the skit, what we want for virtually the same, I'm throwing stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, if it's between a new and a renovated building, and we're going to get the exact same uh, things that our users and our, our public needs, we don't have the stomach to do this, so eliminate that option. Yep. But you really can't make that decision until yep. you hear back from them order magnitude pricing saying <clears throat> pricing similar between those three options or no there's not at all. There's the cost of a new construct newly constructed building is far less. Uh, then to that cost, somebody, and you're absolutely right, Peter, somebody's gonna have to find out the value of this plot. And that the value of this plot is gonna be affected by what the civil engineer is gonna find. We already know that. There's some deficiencies. Sure, and sure. But just the just the site here is in a pretty attractive position, yeah. and it also um, is attractive from the point of view of enhancing our village and all of that, well, which is, you know, sort of part of the bigger. We talked about that our little committee that, picture. Yeah, uh, and we talked with the consultant. Yeah. If we do this right, let's say we stay on this site for now. We really wanted to speak about Middlesex. It's not just the building housing functions, it's something that's going to show Middlesex a strong, vibrant community. And me personally, that would be yeah. pretty exciting. Yep. Yeah. I'll also add that they did mention, which I felt was a bit of a selling point, making, making it feel to me like we would be very supported, that they actually aren't accepting new work, but they were very intrigued by this one. Um, and, you know, we're anxious to put that's in the old. That's the old. I liked it, yeah. though. They say, I mean, oh, from the yeah, barbed yeah. rock caught in the corner exactly. of your jaw when they said that. But but when he said, you know, that, that um, you know, the, the people who he checked references on really also felt extremely supported by, yeah. by the team. So I liked that. I think all the firms, this is a lost leader for them. They all want the big project. Uh, I believe that the two finalists did that. And that's great for us. Right. Yeah, I, I would just say, you know, first of all, I think it was great we got five proposals. Yeah. I did read all five of them. I didn't read down through the list of awards and prizes and too much of that, but I paid a lot of attention to the cover letter and the scope of work and the way they laid it out and I thought you know we could have worked with any of them probably so we're lucky to have five to pick from or four to pick from five to pick from yeah we're lucky we were all quality and the two finalists really deserve to be fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so unless anyone any other Peter, board members Eric, Eric has a oh I'm sorry yeah Eric. here for a minute just got a question yeah maybe, maybe just plant a seed I don't know it's probably putting the cart before the horse but has anybody thought of maybe doing a combined building of town hall and town shed? We have. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got the property. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just, uh, just Eric made a good point this afternoon. We we talked about this. <laughs>
being transparent. We talked about it. And uh, uh, it's a lot easier to build a combination building than it is two separate buildings. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've already said this, you know, the last time we talked about it, I mean, I think we're just throwing money down the, just down the tubes to even think you can fix this up. And if you want a place for the, for the town clerk and, and, uh, and, the, and the town garage, just go build one. Yeah, we may very well find that out. Right, and I think that we have to, this is, the, I know I know what you're saying, it does feel like, and you know, if we get a grant, that, you know, it could help out a bit. Um, the maximum we can apply for is about 25,000. Um, so I don't, you know, I think we'll apply for that and they will give you less if they like your project and d don't want to fund the whole thing, but. There are new opportunities popping up all the time. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna bring this up at, as another matter, but um, I, Friday I was speaking with um, uh, Mr. Pembroke, who's the director of planning and uh, buildings with the state. Um, they are currently standing up uh, efforts to push out money um, regarding, you know, efficiency work within buildings. Uh, we had some conversations as to whether or not that was isolated to existing buildings or if it included new construction efforts for municipalities and whatnot. And uh, the effort is new enough that uh, the new construction piece was a little bit up in the air, but um, you know they're looking at, at projects uh, being awarded up to $500,000 to complete this type of work. Um, and there, he suggested that uh, we make sure we connect with the uh, Regional Planning Commission. And I mentioned the fact that we had been working with Christian on some, some various efforts. Um, and he said that that was great um, and that we should make some connections there and find out more about this. Um, so I was, I was gonna bring it up under other matters, but when you start talking about how we pay for this and, and the cost, you know, the, some of the analysis work that are in some of these proposals, like uh, I, I know some of them had additional costs for energy analysis and, right. and whatnot. Those, that program fully funds those efforts. They have contractors that they're currently out. They got RFPs out right now um, with reputable contractors here that would come in and provide that service as part of that program. So there are opportunities to um, not use the town resources for all of those efforts. Now, you said this guy's name was? Uh, it's Eric Pembroke. Eric Pembroke. No. Uh, he's the director of, uh, I believe it's uh, planning, planning and Buildings. Planning and Property Management. Plan, planning and Property Management for, uh, with BGS. Okay. That's the word I was waiting for. Yeah. Buildings. So there's, there's. Yeah. Uh, so you're saying we might, we can get up to $500,000 That's to redo this building? And it may not just include just existing buildings. Him and I had a conversation. I asked the question is, if a town was looking to do additions or new construction, if that could be included in that. Um, and he needed to look into it a little bit further for that answer, but it may have been possible. So I think for us, that's a connection that we need to make through this effort because some of the things that these guys are planning to charge us for, and that should be discussed in how in you know, we, have yeah. Those, yeah. we have those conversations, that there may be other outside sources that we pull into this process that don't require us to utilize town resources. Yeah. So I just, I wanna make sure we're aware of that and we should have some follow-up conversations with, um, with those folks. Yeah. Do you remember Sandy or um, Dave, because I know a couple of the um, RFPs had mentioned they would sort of support you in identifying funding. Were they one that, this? they say no on historic preservation consulting. I don't know if that's funding, that's probably just more about keeping, following the rules of keeping it a historic building. But um, is that a part of this? that they will help us like because I'm wondering that they, they could even facilitate it but it could be that it's paid for 
Because that's the other thing that, that um, I felt we, we were going to get from this team was um, more guidance and like sort of helping direct this um, as opposed to feeling like it was going to be put on the select board to have to do all the steps um, for this whole process because that's just not something that like any of us really have time for. What, what were your thoughts on that, Dave? You, know, you guys don't need to worry about the details. You're going to be presented with an <coughs> option have been fully vetted and fully worked by the consultants. But there's going to be some logical points where you're going to have to be updated and tell us, uh, say, tell whoever's working on it that yes, we like where you're headed, keep, keep going, or we like where you're headed with this little tweak, or we like where you're headed, by the way, did you know that there are funds available from this organization? Um, but no, we're not going to ask you to be involved in paint colors. What's that? <laughs> paint colors. We're not going to ask you to pick out colors of paint. Oh, paint colors. Yeah. Uh, but you are going to be shown a lot of different options, and the committee should fully recognize that this board needs to make decisions on an ongoing basis, but the grunt work behind giving you the options will be done long before it gets to you. Yeah. I don't know that we need more options. We do so well, well with decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and if the board feels that you'd rather not have all that information, just tell us. We can make the decisions. So um, if, if a recommendation, if, if you guys can agree to that, that we um, engage with VIA tonight, that would be helpful because what? I need to start working on the budget for the MPG. For the what? The municipal the grant. grant. And when did you say that was due, Liz? December 1st. So Sandy's that's... written most of it and getting letters of support and stuff, but the budget is where we need to hone in. Liz, we're not going to have to expend any money right off. Or no. No. Yeah. We're not, if I understand that right, and pardon my ignorance, is that you're going to, we're going to apply for the grant first? Well, the, the grant just happens to be due December 1st. So we're going to go ahead and, like, agree to, so, so, well, yes, we may have to pay for, some initial work, right? Um, and that's why the budget piece is important for me because I need to know what in this budget is going to be something that we pay them after we know we get the grant, which is until February 1st. But that's but, like but, the earliest but, but, we can start I mean, money. What, and you know, we've already learned this have lesson the hard way <laughs> once. When we're authorizing the uh, committee, to negotiate and retain this firm to do this work. Mm -hmm. We're putting on ourselves on the hook for that. Yes, we are, which was what so I whether, think the whether we're thinking that that's, you know, that the, yes. that the fallback is the ARPA money yeah. or whatever it is, we have to be yes. ready, willing, and able and prepared uh, to come up with that twenty-five dollars or $28,000, whatever it is, just in case. I, I agree. I mean, I'm reading things every day about these pots of money that are coming and here and there and for this and that. and. You know, you can get yourself thinking, oh, my God, we should certainly get that and we won't have to spend the money. But uh, uh, the other thing, of course, is, uh, which we all know, is this $25,000 is a tiny little amount compared to what the, whether it's renovations or rebuilding or whatever, that's going to be, that's going to be a big bill. And who knows if we can get some help for that, that would be, that would be great. But it's likely going to be a bond and the town's going to have to pay for it. Uh, over time, so this is just a, this is just the first baby step in the exactly. uh, in the process, unfortunately. <laughs> and yes, you are exactly right. If we don't get the grant, we are going to need to come up with the money, which is what I believe when we had our list of ARPA, it was around thirty thousand that we set aside, twenty five to thirty thousand so. that we set I aside for this that. actual process. Yes, Victor. Ever. Yeah, Jason, Peter, and I. Yeah, go ahead, Sandy. I. Hey. I think what we're going to need to do is, if, you know, that um, the select board can approve or uh, okay moving forward that Liz and Dave would begin on a negotiation for a contract that would break it down into like a phase one and a phase two, and the phase two would be what would <coughs> cover if we get it. Right. So that it's very clear that we're not you know, spending money um, 
that would be covered by the municipal planning grant uh, beforehand, but at the same time, it's clear that we're, we're gonna be able to get started on this before we know that whether or not we will have the municipal planning grant. Right. Do we do we have a timeline on when they award that those February funds? First. February first. Yeah. Peter. Yes. I think you and I are probably the only ones in here that are old enough to remember, and I don't know if it uh -oh. would be beneficial to bring this up. But wasn't there wasn't this all done about 12, 15 years ago by Ray Hill? Would that serve any purpose? Is there, uh, there was look a, at that? There was a very informal process but they, I remember nothing nothing is comprehensive no no not probably not but still uh john and uh White yep. River we're in on yep. it. where is yep. that oh well, i'm sure it's downstairs probably tucked away in that vault somewhere i mean i can't you know I, i'm not saying it would replace it but i can't i mean i i would imagine that it might have uh you know some value i would think so yeah well, what was that, uh, Victor? Just like a walkthrough analysis type of deal, or was it? No, it was more no. than it was more than that. It was, but it wasn't. It wasn't anywhere near as comprehensive as this. It was, you know, I, I think it was when <laughs> when we replaced the boiler, which has now exactly. failed. Exactly. It was that's what, that's what caused the discussion. So, you know, what do we do about energy improvements? What do we do about replacing the boiler? When what do we do about the you know building in general? That kind of. That, that's what I remember. Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm vaguely yeah. recalling. Right. And, right. Uh, well, I, I, any any I would presume any historical if we have if we have Gene Jocelyn's wiring diagram of when he put the electric heat down stairs that might be helpful. But uh, <laughs> any any historical information we have about what was done to this building. We can give to them here. <laughs> So probably going to be interesting. Like yeah. Well, who knows? Who knows? I mean, they may just look at it and say, you know, well, this doesn't help they us at all. Find, but they may find some measurements or things that are behind yep. the walls that we found earlier. Yeah. Uh, it can only be used like you like you just said. They may think it's very valuable. They may say, no, we want to do it ourselves again to get yep. an update. Yep. But we'll, we'll, well, I don't think. The wall I don't think, and I, I could be I could be wrong, Victor, but I don't think we ever did, ever created a real blueprint of this building. I mean, we had sketches right, of what sketches it was, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a... A yeah. vision of what you could do if you wanted to. Yeah. 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 But anyway, we should we should try and dig that out. Are you listening, Sarah? Oh, okay. She's going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't want to leave the meeting to go dig it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think to, to cut to the chase for tonight, I think we have to decide if we're ready, willing, and able to approve the recommendation of our committee, let them go back and negotiate. Then I presume after the negotiation, you would come back to us and say, okay, here it is, uh, and then we would approve it. Would you, do you, okay. Because right now we don't know what the, what the final price is. But we could also, I suppose, theoretically, give them a range and say as long as it's no more than $28,000 or $30,000 or some amount, uh, we give you the authority to go ahead. The other thing that I s strongly feel is whatever number we come up with, we need to put some kind of contingency number in there because there are things I that are coming. I think they have it in here, don't they? 15 percent. That's, no, that's not it. But is that included in the 28000 or no? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe I misread it. I just know no matter what no matter what you do, yeah. something's gonna come up and they said, Oh, well we have to look into this, that's not included in our proposal, it's gonna cost X dollars, you know. It says this is a not to exceed fee estimate, which sort of seems like a um, oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> not to exceed estimate. I think it's it'd be great if this board give us the maximum number we can spend. I think so too. Otherwise we're gonna lose some time. Yep. And I know we don't have to have everything ready for town meeting, but it should be nice to give people a pretty good, pretty darn good presentation at town meeting. Yep, I agree. So, so Liz, did you determine if there's contingency money in there or no? Um, all, no, it says consultant fees include a 15% markup. In addition, other reimbursable expenses will be billed at 1.15 times cost. That's reimbursable. That's here. 
I don't think there was any contingency. I don't think there was. Well, if it, so, the, so we, their their amount right now is sitting at twenty eight thousand. Yeah. So if we said a ten percent contingency would be twenty eight hundred dollars, fifteen percent would be whatever it is thirty, yeah. whatever. Yes. Um, I'd recommend fifteen percent just because. Yeah. That'd be thirty-two two, thirty-two thousand. And that's going to come out of ARPA funds if we don't get a grant. Yeah. Right. Shouldn't that be stated in that in your motion? You know what? I well, we're on the air now. But here's the thing: municipal planning grant wants to know what your other choices are, and they're going to turn us down if they see that they're, that we're going to use our ARPA funds. We really want to use this. We don't want to use the ARPA funds. But if we have to, we will come up with funds no, I'd be, for this. I'd be mute on it for that reason, Victor. Even no though it's reason. not. <laughs> I mean, we, we, all know, right we all know that's where it's got to come yeah. from. <clears throat> we're not going to sell it. And we're, we are mentioning it in the grant because you have, I mean, we already said that we didn't get the CDBG grant and, um, you know, that part of this will you know, inevitably get paid out of by ARPA funds is because it's going to cost more than what we can get from the municipal planning grant anyway. We know that. Um, and I mean, the, the, I, you know, the chances of us getting the full 25,000 are <coughs> probably slim, right? But they might give us 9,000 or 10,000. And so that's, you know, where the remainder would come from. Right, Sandy? In your experience, Sandy, have you done municipal, like, have you gotten the full amount every time you've asked, or? Um, I think so, but that's, you know, I... Right, I and we got the full amount when we asked for it, but it wasn't the full amount that we could apply for. So, uh, so again, and I'm just trying to keep us, keep us on track here. Um, we basically have two two choices here, and I understand I understand the time is of the essence bit, but I think the question is, Peter, do, if the board does not want that ready for town meeting, we, we don't have to press the accelerator here. It could take a week. No, I think we do want it for town. I think we I think it's important to have the best presentation we can have at town meeting. Can we have so so all right. All I all I was going to say is there there are two procedurally there are two ways to do this. One is to um, give your subcommittee the authority to negotiate a certain not to exceed amount, which now to me is looking like thirty-two or thirty-three thousand um, dollars. Obviously, you're not going to tell them that when you start negotiating with them. Um, but the other choice is to go ahead and do your negotiation and come back to us, and we can have a special meeting within a day or two to ratify whatever you come up with. And if that makes the board more comfortable to do it that way, I think I, that'll work. I mean, if we're going to move forward with this, I'd say give them the not to exceed and, and go. Um, if we're not going to do it, that's a different story. But um, I think my one of the things I would add to that is uh, through this process and this negotiation process, um, I would want to ensure that uh, they're aware that we're seeking other opportunities and if, say, this other avenue panned out and we were able to receive resources from there, but we had to use their contractors for, you know, energy analysis or, or any other analysis for that, for that matter, that uh, VIA is aware that we're, we're pursuing something like that and it's not going to be a hang up if they don't use their guy to do something through this process. Um, so that would be important yeah. to me. And isn't it true? Yeah. I mean, so Dave, let's say that we all decide, like, we go through this process, and s at some point in this whole long process, we decide that we're going to renovate the building. You have a new contract with, like, if VIA could potentially be the lead on it, right? But that's not any of this. That would be no, separate. That's like a that's whole totally separate, separate like, That's thing. a whole we're separate. We're not committing VA for the entire project. We're committing VA only for what you read about. Right, project. just this thing, right. Logic will tell us if we're happy with them. Right. That um, they're going to get the whole job, which is why this is probably a loss leader for them mm -hmm. and for Black River Design. Right. And so to your point, Randy, I'm not sure that anything in this short term would like 
that, that we would be able to come up and say, oh, look, we can actually do this part ourselves. Well, um, so there, there are things in there specifically calling out like energy analysis and, and right, things. Right, I think. And, and in my discussion with, with Eric Yeah, we didn't even Friday, include that. We didn't include okay, that. Okay. That's so, like, we knew that that was something that we could do another time, and that's, like, that's not in this. Yeah, so. so your question is, of course, if we say there's a funding source available to us, but we need to use this engineer, we can turn to them now and say, we want that flexibility to tell you that we want this engineering firm instead of this one that you recommended. That, that's well within our, our bounds. Yeah. And my sense and is, is that they're aware of this stuff as well. They're, they're probably on top of all these you know, sources of funding, especially because they do work with municipalities mm -hmm. that need yeah, this to isn't piecemeal first, this things isn't together. Floor, yeah. Right. Very, but, very but how, how the, logistically, I mean, what I don't want to do is, let's say we can access some of this money, but we have to use a certain engineer. I don't want VIA to be surcharging the bill for the engineer because they're somehow providing supervision or, I mean, how would, how would that all work? We got to talk about that. That's, <laughs> that's exactly what, what I'm asking. Randy, is your thing out in public yet, what you have talked yeah, about? Yeah, so Eric, we basically where we're, uh, presenting on uh, information for an event the Agency of Natural Resources was putting on. Mm -hmm. um, and they happened to be there at a table next to us. Okay. And Eric, you know, said, you know, some of this is still being ironed out, you know, but we're actively seeking projects moving forward. You know, um, <coughs> it was something like $46 million that they were looking, looking at and, mm -hmm. um, I think 35 of that was dedicated specifically to projects, and they they anticipate, you know, um, they want to see projects come forward. Yeah. Is this, is there some link you can send us, or some sort of? Is this like Build Back Better money or something? Like I that? What is this? I will I will dig up what okay. I've got, and and if not, I don't mind reaching out and asking for more okay. specific. So that might be helpful for us, just yeah. when we're you know. I think there was something in the press because I when you brought this up, it rang a bell. It was something I read recently, and I don't know if it was from a digger or. Uh, I tried to go on their website days. really quick just to see if I yeah. could attach a name to it, yeah. um, but you know, no. doing it from okay. meeting, so. It's... Google money to help towns, <laughs> <laughs> Vermont. I'm going to make a motion. Go for it. That we accept the recommendation of the committee to engage uh, VIA for the purpose of doing our um, are we calling it a feasibility study or a, a, just a study of, of the town hall? And that we authorize the committee to uh, negotiate the final um, cost budget with, um, with VIA. I'm assuming that once that's done, we are going to have to ratify and approve that before signing off on a document. I don't, th I don't no? think so. If we if we give them a do not do not exceed okay. number and they come back with that number, then it's a done. Okay. I think it's a done deal. Um, that we set the amount um, that the committee's authorized to spend at um, the quoted 28,000 plus a 15% uh, contingency for unforeseen expenses or cost overruns. The thing I, I just want to be sure we're, we're clear on is that contingency should not be, should not be part of the negotiation with them. No. We want you to negotiate the best price with them. In our minds, we're going to think, okay, there's potentially 15% more, but we don't want to throw that into the contract with them. No. Right. Yeah. Touch okay. Finger Got it. Me. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> is, there a, is there a second to that motion? I will. Thank you, Randy. Sarah, you've got that? Well, <laughs> four of us. Um, uh, Phil move to accept the recommendation of the subcommittee to engage VIA 
to conduct the town hall feasibility study and to authorize the committee to negotiate the final budget with the DAA to its quoted $28,000 plus a $15,000 contingent, 15% contingency. And I don't know where it, what to do after that. So I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. I don't know the answer to this question. They will know because this is a, on the record that we have a contingency. We're not hiding it. No, some will do. But I, I just don't want it to be front. thrown into their contract. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll tell them up front. That contingency, no the contingency is for other items and things which may come up during the course of the study. And I would think they would be glad to know that that was possible. Got to be careful. Yes, you know how to you know how to deal with this. I know you do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whether they'll actually look at our minutes or not, who knows? But yeah, we want to have it in the minutes. I would if I was them. Yeah, I would too. But anyway, it's not going to be in there. Well, maybe you just make the motion to be without the contingency in between the board. You just we can handle it. We're not going to get it unless we want it. Yeah. So do you okay. want me to take 15% out or not? No, I'll leave it in. No. Okay. I, I want it in the minutes. That's what, we're, mm -hmm. that's what we're planning on, or potentially planning on. So with that, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 I'm going to uh, recuse myself from the vote just because of my relationship with the principal at Black River Design. Can I vote? You can vote. I'll vote aye. So it's four ayes, one abstain, or recusing, whatever the right word is. Okay, okay. Liz, thank you. Thank you. Liz, can you send me a copy of the proposal so I can just have it in our record? Uh, yeah, do you want a paper copy? Sure. <laughs> That'll work. I think this is yours. She can have it. Okay, because I thought there were extra ones. I know I that Sarah has some. I have, I have one. Okay. Actually. I have one too. I just want to put it in so when so things start coming in. I have one too. Okay, thank you guys and thank you. Mm -hmm. Now the real, now the real work begins, right? So, um, are you going to call both of them in the morning, or did you already talk to them? I can't remember. Um, I'm happy to do it. You should tell me the protocol. Should somebody from the board be contacting them, um, or my the representative of the board? But, I mean, I'm only saying you because you've been in contact with them, but I can call them. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it should be somebody from the committee, whether it should be yeah. you because you're on the board or... That, that makes sense to me that it's this. Okay. Yeah. She's on the board. She's on the committee. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And unless you have a strong, a strong reason that you shouldn't and Dave should. I mean, I have no problems with no. Dave doing it either, but it makes sense. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with doing it. Um, I think, though, Dave, you and I should talk because we'll want to set up. Sandy, you're leaving Friday, right? So you're sort of out, and um, so we're gonna, <laughs> she smiles. She's gone. <laughs> um, we're going to want to meet with them ASAP. Right. Okay. And um, like, do we want to meet with them as soon as this week, if we can? Sure. Okay. <coughs> All right. And who's the person that I should call from DIA? I'm going to have to go back and take a look. Yeah, who signed the letter? Yeah, yeah who signed the letter? Okay. That's what I said. There was the Asher, I think his name and then was there was Asher Nelson. Was it Asher? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's going to be the principal to be working with us. Okay. The senior that works with us. Okay. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. um, Dave, thank you for all your work. Yes. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> you like this kind of torture. Right. <laughs> and thank you, Sandy, as well. Yes. Liz. Mm hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, completely, uh, completely shifting gears. Discussion of whether the town should implement a social media policy as a part of the personnel policy. <clears throat> I, I mean, the answer is, in my opinion, we need to have a social media policy. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether it's a standalone policy or whether it's part of the personnel policy. Well, <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Victor. You need a policy is a policy uh, pertaining to uh, <coughs> uh, town-owned equipment, right? Right. 
I mean, you can't you can't stop a guy a person from from using social media on their own phone. I mean, they can. That's freedom. Of you speech, can. It? It's, it's and if if, you, if you read through this stuff, yeah, they can be limited on what they can talk about with regard to town Fair stuff. Point. As can as can we. As like if if all of a sudden you start posting stuff on social media about what's going on at our select board meetings, I would prefer that that not happen. So. <coughs> you're not an employee. You're an elected official. There's a big difference. Well, there is a difference, but it, it would pertain potentially, I would think, to us as well as to employees. Well, we better be sure. Well, I think we can probably, if if we're going to have a policy, you can. There can be recommendations in your policy um, about municipal people oh. versus, you know, me. So I, please. I don't disagree with you that I, mean, I think it's personal responsibility what you do, but as far as controlling someone else, what they free speech, I don't know about that. So I yeah, but here did you did you read the, the first part of this? You know, they, they pretty much say that. Therefore, if a municipality wants to regulate its employees' personal off-duty use of social media, it should do so in personnel or other policy specific to their behavior after consultation with its attorney. I mean, they're nervous about how you yeah, do that. I mean, we, this is not an easy question, how you no, do it. I mean, no. saying we should do it is one thing. Right. Figuring out how to do it Big difference. is another thing. But um, certainly, we've got, and I did, I did I, I admit it was pretty quick, but I did read through this, and a lot of it made, a lot of it made sense to me. I mean, we're not, we're not looking at this tonight. I just think it's something we should have on our radar screen and we need to deal with. I mean, it's it's becoming a huge issue for not only governmental entities, but private businesses and, you know, everybody else. So having, having a personnel or having a uh, social media policy that regulates town sponsored accounts, absolutely fine with putting in a personnel policy. Right. I think trying to regulate people's personal accounts is a completely different, absolutely. different no, no, no. activity absolutely. here. Absolutely. So I just want to make sure we're clear about what we're, no. what we're is... proposing that we move forward with discussion on. Yeah. And, and my, my stance would be that you know, the, the personal, personal social media realm is outside of the purview of this group and the personnel policy that we would potentially be talking about. Um, the, in my mind, the personnel policy uh, around social media would only regulate town-sponsored accounts. So like if the town had a, a Facebook account or if the town had a Twitter account or, or something that said, we are the town of Middlesex, and my understanding is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, but as of today, we don't have any social media, and we've been advised to stay away from activating town-sponsored social media accounts. So the only, thing, the only thing I disagree with a little bit is if someone, one of us, or an employee, who knows who, were to start using social media, to discuss town issues, I think that's a problem. It's a it's a personal. It it it, it in my opinion it, it it really depends on. As a select board member, I'm very careful when I have conversations and I express my opinion, um, and I I try to be very clear that I'm not speaking for the town of Middlesex. I'm not right. speaking for the select board or any other right. member of the board. This is. As a town resident, this is my opinion. So when I talk to somebody, I try to be very clear about that. If somebody's misrepresenting, um, or if they're representing themselves for saying that they're representing the town in, in that, then then that's, that's a completely different. Or or the issue. other part is where they're disclosing information which was discussed in a confidential. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows what? I mean, that you just, you know, it's it's tricky. It's really tricky, because you can't, you know, free speech and all that. You can't you can't prevent people from. In my experience, from what I've seen, is they're fine as long as it's they're dis dissociated them from the town. 
But as soon as they say, I'm a town employee and this is blah, 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 without saying this is not the town's opinion, that's where it becomes a problem. You know, for Does instance, let's say, let's yeah, say two they're representing them. themselves as right. a town agent. Yep. Well, let's, let's say, for instance, too, and huh, this has happened, not in social media, thank God, but through the underground railroad of uh, Middlesex Town Communication, you have two members of the road crew are having a spat, and all of a sudden that bubbles out onto social media, you know, whether it's front porch forum or Twitter or, or what it is. Um, if it's town related, if they're having a per, you know, somebody's, who knows, having some kind of personal situation, that's a different thing. But if it, if it relates to their work in the town, like Fred doesn't know how to drive the grader and this happened and that happened and the other thing happened, <laughs> that's not appropriate. But, uh, but how you but draw that voice, line and how you put it in a policy, I don't know. They're voicing their opinion of what they think. If I don't think that Bob is doing a good job plowing the road, why don't I have a right to say Bob's not doing a good job plowing the road? I don't know. I don't know. I just want to say that Liz gave, uh, uh, sent me two handouts, one from the Central Vermont Medical Center and the other one, I guess, was from Garden City, New Jersey, that are just kind of like guidelines for employees right. on social yeah. media. Mm -hmm. And they're in your packet. So yeah. if you yeah. have a chance to look at those, that might be a direction you want to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very slippery slope. Mm -hmm. you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. you got to put a lot of and I think guidelines are, I mean, and yeah, to be honest, some people just don't know that, right? They, they honestly don't know that they shouldn't say something disparaging. Because everybody says disparaging things all the time. And it's just is not professional when you work for, like, I wouldn't start disparaging my employer on my personal social media account because I know better, right? It's just, it's, but some people literally don't know better, younger people in particular. And so I think guidelines are not, there's nothing harmful about having guidelines. And you're right, we're not gonna be able to take them to the police and say, you can't say that about the town grader, right? I mean, but I think it helps to just set a precedent that this is professionalism when you're, you know. And we may wanna also have something where, you know, on like what CVMC does is that you can use social media on your breaks, but not while you're, you know, plowing the roads, right? I mean, we might have to do that because well, what if something happened? Like, you know, somebody crashed and found that they were texting. Doing that. Well, right. I mean, and it, that's an extreme example, but even if they're in the shop and they're being paid to, you know, maintain equipment mm -hmm. or, or clean shop or whatever it is, it's, it's, you know, it's it's town time. They're on they're on uh, company time, so to speak, and well, they think... shouldn't be engaging in personal activities. You know, um, they need a break to go make an appointment or something like that. Work it out with your supervisor. But um, you know, that just goes to saying. I mean, I'm not opposed to, uh, and I really feel like this ties into um, efforts that we've talked about about you know really thoroughly reviewing and making changes to our personnel policy as a whole um, and including there I think if this is if this is due to an isolated incident and we're talking about trying to uh, discuss reprimanding somebody and I think we need to go into an executive session to have more specific information out there and not just shoot blindly um, but that's only if we're using this as as a mechanism to try to uh, combat specific incidents where we're trying to reprimand somebody. Um, but I feel like it, it, it does tie into the effort that we've discussed ab around uh, a thorough review and, and making revisions of the personnel policy to, to, to bring it up to today's standard. Um, and I don't think that that's out of the question. No, I, but I do I want to be very careful about overstepping and feeling like we have the the right to control um, folks personal social no. media no. efforts no so. but this is an example about like us right as select board people i don't know if you do but i have two accounts on front porch forum one is mm -hmm. a select board and one is liz Shar from culver hill road right and so i rarely use the select board one so but if i'm doing anything that remotely seems like a town 
announcement, I'm going to use the select board one because that to me is like that separation mm -hmm. between the two. Now, I think, you know, if someone goes on their social media and says the Middlesex roads, you know, are so terrible and they're, you know, disparaging the Middlesex roads, there's no, there's nothing illegal about them doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Do we want them to say, you know, full disclosure, I'm an employee of Middlesex and these are my opinions. Like, and what are we gonna do if they don't? Nothing, right? But like, just maybe having a guideline that helps people yeah. feel so like they can express themselves, and, and but know how to express themselves. Your line is just we want to do the whole, the whole policy. Yeah. There is no social media policy though that we no, have. No, no, I'm talking about the, the whole, whole, the whole, oh, the whole personal. Personal. It might fall just under employee conduct, right? Right. right. Rather than a separate policy, just. Right. Employee conduct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because we can address it without without walking that line mm -hmm. of of mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, kind of nudging into the rights that people have. So yeah. we well, can do that through. We don't want to be. We don't want to be appearing before the Vermont <laughs> Supreme Court, let alone the federal Supreme right. Court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hopefully, and hopefully, it won't happen. I, I like the. I do like the idea of. of of guidelines rather than trying to make strict rules, because strict rules are hard to, mm -hmm. everything is subject to interpretation, needless so to say. Would, do you want me to update the personnel policy and put it on the agenda for the November 15th meeting? We've got no, two we've, we've, uh, we've, we've talked specifically about that and not and not um, trying to address that until we got through budgeting and every all of the high priority okay. stuff. Just yeah. asking for a scheduling. Yeah. 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 Can be part of next year's goals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, next year's soon to be forgotten, it's ignored going. goals. Yeah. Now, when this was brought up, anyways, it's. Uh, I think it can be handled uh, through uh, our uh, our leadership. Is that what you are? Leadership. Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that's. I think that's that's. Uh, that can be handled through that. I think that, that that's the way to do it. But whether it's in the whether it's in the code of conduct part of ours, no. Dorinda suggested in our personnel policy, which might be the right place for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you need you need some kind of support. I mean, you do, you don't want the leadership making up the rules as they go along. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. that doesn't work either, and it's also putting people in difficult situations. Yeah. You don't want people carrying banners around saying, you know, all you, all you have to do is, is watch the news and see these people running around with, my, you know, free speech, I can say this, I can say that, I can say the other. Well, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Anyway, enough for tonight. Can we agree on that? We did. Okay. Um, highway report, update. Senator Rose done. <laughs> yeah, it's so good and smooth. I just do. A, I still have to do a little bit of shoulder work, but other than that, it's done. I don't so think I understood great. that he was actually doing it. What's that? Like you actually did it? You were like driving the truck? No. No. Oh, okay. No. I, that's what I thought that you used that. I just said he was doing it. I was like, I was like, Eric really did all the paving himself. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, like one of those little rollers. Yeah. 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 Uh, new truck, I saw it today, it's together. Uh, they were going to do a once over on it and it's going to Kenworth and they gotta do some wiring thing and then we're getting it, so. And they're taking away, we no longer have responsibility for our old friend. Yeah, that's why it hasn't moved. I didn't dare to touch it. <laughs> so, that, so that we did determine that they're gonna uh, uh, trade that we weren't going to try to s sell that out. Yeah, it's the same separate. trade in, and just okay. get it gone yeah. and not deal with it anymore. And did they end up honoring or remotely even close to what yeah. um, they had projected? They matched it, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew there was discussion that they thought it wasn't very far off, but I didn't I didn't remember hearing the final word. I believe so. It's my understanding. I haven't seen the actual paper yet. Okay. Yep. Last week was officially a year that we ordered it. October 26. 
Well, no. I'll drive that other truck before it comes. It has to move. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not true. We, we pulled it out to put the wing in the back so that it can go away with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I think that's it. So on the highway thing, in order to get reimbursed on the grant, yep. somebody has to put a closeout report okay. at TA 65, and it's got to be done within 45 days. Okay. Are you I'll, familiar with that? No, but I can figure it out. Is we it did. spelled out? It's in this the a form. Co right? It's copy of the form is a TA um, 65. It's got to be done within 45 days, and it's part of. Do you have a copy of the grant paperwork in your office? I'll look. If not, I've got one, but it um, spells which, it out. What which grant is that? This is the one for the, uh, um, the paving. For the paving. For the paving. So okay. it's, we get 175000 Okay. Um, when that gets. I will look, and if I don't see it, I will ask you for it. Okay. Are you, yeah. okay. you going to bring up? You said you would, but that's okay. I can bring it up. <laughs> um, oh, I, wait. Stop. Let me do it. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, we had a, a quote for uh, 340000 341.65. Right, and they billed us for three forty nine. dollars And the, the point comes out is they don't give us an estimate. They told us that was a bid. So, I mean... I was under the impression that we were paying for the tonnage, but, but you know, whatever came in the trucks. But, I mean, that's from my past history of with the state of Vermont and not with the town of Middlesex. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if, if that's a legitimate gripe or not. And I mean, it's legitimate, very legitimate. Is it, does it, is it one that the board or would like to pursue? Could you just state that? I'm sorry. It's, you're talking, are you talking about the, the Hutchins bill? Yes. Okay. Just, I just need for that. The other part of it is when they did the estimate, they estimated um, uh, a 14, when they did a, gave us the bid, they bid it out at 14,500 square yards of coal planing. And they build us out at fifteen thousand. So somebody either mismeasured or something. That's a well. What's that like? Twelve fifty, twelve hundred fifty dollars. Um, I've got it broken out. Two forty-five times uh, five hundred. So it's it's like yeah, 12 .5. the whole bid came out at nine thousand dollars over. So I said until I got approval from the board that we weren't going to pay it. I mean, this clearly says that it's a bid. For the three forty one sixty five. We'll sell unit price. It says total bid price. Everything on here. I don't see estimate anywhere. Uh, let me start looking through. I looked through. I didn't see the words estimate on anything. Through the bulletin tomorrow. Just just pricing based on asphalt. Just pricing based okay. on asphalt. So I mean, for the for the tonnage, for the actual material. I mean, that could be read that they could change the price yeah, for the material, but not for the cold planing. So the cold planing was fourteen five hundred. They billed us for fifteen thousand. And that may just be generous measurements over, uh, you're not talking a lot when you're talking a mile uh, 22 foot wide. And no, I mean, it's 1,200 bucks. It's 1,200 bucks. I'm not making. Feet, right? So what I was looking at here, Dorinda, was just there's a volatility um, note here that says that they can change the pricing. So that would be anything that they're charging us by the ton for. Mm -hmm. So that but they leaves... didn't change the price, though. 112. That's all. The, the price did not change. And that's the original? Yep. Price stayed at oh, 112, right. 245. Right. So that did not change. They it's just the quantities. The quantities all changed and the yardage all changed. Theoretically, the, the coal planing should have been less because uh, they didn't do on the, uh, on the uh, south side of the bridge. No, originally right. we were going to do it. I mean, I think you just have to. I think you might want to start with a conversation. With yeah. EJ. Okay. Yep. 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 
original bid? Yeah, because I don't have that. You don't have that either? No. Oh, you got issues. <laughs> <laughs> I can send it to you tomorrow. Thank you. I, I, got, I can photocopy it whatever when I get out. Yeah, whatever. she was right, though. It doesn't change. The unit price doesn't change on that. So that note down there doesn't no, really apply. They didn't use there. the What's that? Okay. of the volume. Yeah, they didn't use the volatility to ch change the price. They changed the volume, right? Right. Yeah. Anything else, gentlemen? We're ready for the inevitable change of weather, which is coming. It's not going to be 70 degrees for the next month, I don't believe. <laughs> no, next two weeks. It's supposed to be 70 this weekend, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Not tomorrow, though. Do we, yeah. do we no, know, it's still 60. Do you know what the duration of uh, the Drew transport classes are? Like, are those just a couple more weeks? The his, what? His date for the CDL class. Oh, he said the 24th? 24th. The 24th of this month? Yes. 24th or 25th, one or the other. Yeah, I thought and it was And that was based months. on when they could schedule. Yeah. They said the class was four weeks, but when he, when he, when I talked to Rick, he said, well, yes, but they base it really on when they can actually schedule the, the tests. Yeah. Because it's such an up in the air thing. That's a 24th of November, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's two weeks. All right. Sorry. Is it two weeks? And did we? Um, I know. I think in our last meeting there was discussion about. Uh, I think it was Jay who that was, was looking for list. a referral there. That was on my list. So. Yeah. Um, well, he's was the one that told me about him, and he sent him to to us. So do we have a? I mean, how do we typically handle that? Is that just a, you know, us authorizing Dorinda to to make. You know, uh, a referral payment to Jay. Do we need to be doing that, or do we? Well, have the motion that was made when it was done. I don't know if it was a motion, but what was stated in the minutes was they would get 500 up front, and then another 500 yeah. after. I think it was. Uh, that was a months. year, right? Was well, it was six it? months or a six, year? We went back. And I think forth. it was six months. Okay. It was six months. They would get the second 500. What's the so? What's the the story? I mean, what? Uh, how did that come about? How did what come about? Jay telling me about him. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Jay says I'll send him up. He says my neighbor once was looking for a job. I said, well, let's send him up. I'd say that's a referral. That's a referral. Here. Oh, it's TA-65. That's what it's in the book. The orange book, just do a control F on TA-65. I'll give you instructions. Yeah. Yeah. i got to get him a copy of the... Uh, yeah. Brilliant. And then please give me all those documents you sent. Yep. We'll do it. So I mean if we've already approved that, then it's just a matter of Eric saying, Yes, I got this referral and so yeah. I'll do that. So yep. next. next. Okay. Just doc just document it in the paperwork. So that's yep. why we were doing it. Yeah. But no, we should absolutely. If it doesn't work out, we'll hold them accountable. <laughs> are we fully staffed then? We are, right? Nice. Good job, guys. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Not like our other towns. <laughs> and today was there, or no, yesterday was there. Uh, I'll count it fully again. staffed yeah. once he gets to the CDL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he has to take a test, right, when he finishes the class? And that is, it's a written test and then a driving test, right? Well, the written test is for your permit, and then the, the driving test is for your license. Yeah. So, yeah, so I imagine he's already done the written test as part of the, you know, he's probably already driving. The class work. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, because he can't drive without the permit. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Anything else, boys? Uh, I have one other thing before we move on. Uh, are we into a five-day work week yep. at this point? Yeah. Yep. That was all I had. Okay. I knew that was coming up, so I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are in total, depending on how the discussion goes over the bill, roughly nine thousand dollars over, right? Correct. Yeah. Nine thousand forty-eight, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was looking for a while like it was going to be a lot more than that, so that's... Well, thank Dorinda for bringing that up. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And Dorinda, you're up. I'm up. Oh, let me okay. look at this stuff. Audit report. Okay. 
ready to approve it? Oh, I did read it. I read it. Yes. I well, I read, the, I read the narrative pieces. I didn't go through all the numbers, but I did read the narrative pieces. So we need a motion and that to. Yep. You were happy. You were happy with it, and there wasn't anything. I didn't see anything. I I took the time to read it. I, after not reading it last time, I felt bad. So There's a lot. I, of, I didn't too. take the time to read it. So. There's a lot of Greek in there. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, the message would, that everything is in good shape would right. came through loud and clear. There was no but. comment that said during the left with lots of money. No, right. <laughs> I, I would be happy to make a motion to approve. And I'll second it. Okay. All in favor of the motion to approve our, I always get the FY screwed up, uh, FY 2021 22. audit of the town's finances. No, 22. It says 2021. Oh, that's, my typo, That's sorry. her typo. Oh. It was 22. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, let's get it right. Yeah. Um, a little reprimand. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You've got it, Dorinda. Awesome. Um, Phil, I guess I wasn't clear. Did you end up with that? You didn't. Are we going to? I, <laughs> I yeah. guess. I was going to ask you if it was here. <laughs> no, because you said, I said, well, do you need a credit card? And you said, no. So I said, oh, well, then he ordered I thought, it, you know what, I, I, maybe I was getting ready to leave, and I think I may have just dropped the ball in terms of saying, we just need to send a PO. Okay. Because I don't have the credit. And I think that's the way we've done it with but them we don't, before. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, you've been ordering them, I haven't, so. Um, you said we didn't need the credit card, so. No. So if you want to. I'll get, I'll, I'll get back to touch. You'll get you back to that. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. So yeah. while we're on that discussion, we, um, everybody liking our owl? Um, yeah. Our borrowed owl. Our borrowed yeah. owl. Yes. Our borrowed owl, which brings me to the next question. Um, I did um, do some research on a bunch of stuff. Um, we do need some kind of laptop that to run this if this is the route you guys are interested in going um, I can Costco has one that has everything we need for three hundred and forty nine ninety nine and you just need the different ports and it has four ports or something on it oh, are you talking about the, the TV? For the, to run oh, the okay. owl yeah this, so, this oh, is run. not a computer that's going to be connected to our network or no, anything else no just, this is just to run the just owls. to run the so owl. whatever meeting whether it's the budget committee the um planning commission whatever wants to come in that is here for them to do it but first you got to decide if this is something you're going to want to do before we you know, yeah um and the owls, I looked those up, and I think they run about twelve hundred dollars, from what I found. And do those those basically that package, that twelve hundred dollar package, comes with the various microphones that we see here and, uh, and I, whatnot? Or? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. No, these are his microphones. But that's why I was asking. Was yeah. I knew that they had they had set that up. And, it's a, oh, so these are for the camera. That's for okay. the camera. So this is all built into the owl. Yeah. Okay. You just need a stand. I mean, just probably yeah. would need a stand. Yeah. Well, it can sit on top of the table. It just happens that uh, Orca had a tripod. Yeah. But we can put it on top. It has a stand. We can put it on top of that desk or anything. So currently, everybody that's that's chimed in tonight over the Zoom call is hearing us from the owl. Everyone is yeah. hearing you from the owl. They're seeing you from the owl. Okay. Okay. I would say if we're going to do the owl, that we also get a tripod because this mm -hmm. works out fine. And the other thing is volume is not good coming out of the TV for this room. So I would say get a sound bar. No, you don't want the room coming out of the TV. You'll have well, to hear we got to hear, like, Sandy. we had a hard time oh, you hearing can't, Sandy. You, did, you couldn't hear Sandy? No. Right. He and turned I was it playing up. with the volume. I turned oh, okay. it off. All right. So you want a sound bar I think we, check I think into we, that? Yeah. So I'll get us a package of together and um, give you some pricing on it. And I mean, sound bars are running, what, 100 and yeah, 100, yeah, 100, 100 bucks, 150? They're pretty cheap. I, mean, yeah. you know, right. um, I think right now Orca has said, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I think they have said that no one has requested this owl like, to be returned. Um, this owl has a name, Oscar. 
Um, so we could keep them for the next meeting, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah, because it's going to take allow, you. Hmm? If ORCA allows, I, I would welcome the, the opportunity to continue yeah. using it as long as we can while we. Yeah. Actually, the laptop is the more important thing. That's my laptop. I'm not going to be here for the DRB meeting in right. November. Right. Yeah. No, we shouldn't be using your laptop. No, we shouldn't be no. using anybody's laptop. So. Um, right. So we're, we're we're looking at you know with the owl the laptop sound bar you know somewhere just south of two k um, to make that effort. I mean buy a, a tripod. When you think when you think of what we were looking at as recently as six months ago for a cost it was three or four times that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so this this to me seems very reasonable to be able to continue to have people dial in and participate in meetings. Absolutely. And this is a quantum improvement over what we were trying to do with the laptop. Before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and it just TV seems to work. I mean, it's, I don't know how so. compli is it complicated to set it up? I mean, are people going to be able to come in and turn it on and use it? If everything stays connected, all they have to do is turn on the laptop. It's, oh, it's really just are. connecting to the internet through your Zoom link. Mm -hmm. And that no, 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 I understand that. But I mean, in terms of setting up the owl and the and the TV and the computer that runs the owl, yeah, is that just your video settings for a while? Dorinda and I had we, it was just craziness. People were like, right, but if we set this laptop up for that, nobody should no, be it should be, it should be just Once done. you set it up, you're, you're yeah, basically, they're just coming in and logging in. Right. And then that should all stay the same for right. every user. Right. That's yeah. exactly what I'm asking. Yeah. You're probably going to need someone else to, another computer to allow people in and out. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, because I'm allowing people in and out. Because you're still running the Zoom. So yeah. I'm running the Zoom over here. So I think we can explore that a little yeah. bit, Sarah. But I think if you don't, um, cast your, you know, mirror cast to the we TV and we hardwired in, then you can use that computer to monitor and let people in and out as well because you can just extend the display and then monitor from one and everybody else will see this. Okay. So before I order anything, why don't we try it or something? Yeah. Okay. What size screen is that? That is, is that a 36, Sarah? Dude is gonna make fun of me because it's like a scene from Spinal Tap. I originally ordered a 32 inch screen. And Dude is like, 32 inch screen. Two? <laughs> How are we gonna come down and watch football games? Yeah, yeah. 32. I said, well, I Sarah, I got, what are you thinking? That's as big as your monitor. I was thinking that it would just be like right here yeah. and then and then not That's back. a 55. That's 55. Yeah. So the nice thing about the nice thing about that size is when we have other people in the room, they'll be able to yeah. See it too. It was just us looking at it. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. Although if the price difference is negligible, I'd probably even go to 65 and mount it on the yeah, wall. Yeah, I couldn't get that in my car. <laughs> we'll find, I we'll find a vehicle that can get it back. Could, but it was $249, you know? So I said. <laughs> They're just giving these things away now, aren't they? It's I amazing. said, you know what? Yeah. This works. Yeah. From Walmart. Yeah, and I almost got arrested, so. <laughs> so are we asking Dorinda to go print yes. this stuff and come back and yep. we'll approve something? Or? Yep. I would, I mean, yeah, with our with our new practice. But if you, if you just, I would, if you, she can order it now, then we can get the ball rolling. Is that I would, I would give her the authority to spend up to $2,000 to implement it. I mean, we don't want to. I, I would make that motion. <laughs> okay, second. is there a second? Yeah. Phil? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to authorize Dorinda to spend up to $2,000 to wow. implement the OWL. Is that the... <laughs> and then we have to have a... We, we have maybe to can involve the school Sarah children in naming the OWL. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Sarah we might, that might be a good thing. And that $2,000 does not include the $200 we already spent. No. 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 We, should, we should, in all seriousness, we should consider, in light of what the state's doing, of having our... Uh, Rubney kids name our new oh. truck. <laughs> name our new truck. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's kind of a fun thing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so all in favor, it. all in favor of that motion? Yep. Aye. 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 Opposed? Awesome. Okay. You're good, um, Dorinda. The only other thing which has no relevance to anything, but if you noticed in the bills tonight, we've just paid seventeen hundred, almost eighteen hundred dollars for porta potties. I saw that. Three months worth or whatever. It, that's it was. ridiculous. 
isn't it? I, I don't know, it's seasonal, right? 1745, wasn't it? Something like that. Wind River. Mean, where are there's a porta potty down here, there's right? There's one at Welch Park. I don't know if that ever Well, they, they used. say where they are here. There's, never used it. I don't think that one down at Welch Park ever gets used. And there's two of them over at Romney. And um, well, and the they charge us. Romney should be paying for. Why are, are they? Well, they're, they're on the rec, on the rec field. field. They're on the field. 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 Yeah, okay. Field. Field. Got it. Yeah. 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 So, should be one at hunger, no hunger. Well, I don't think there's one there. I thought that wasn't us, though. I thought that was somebody else that put that there. Yeah, I think there was so. one there. I saw it. There was one, but I don't. We didn't put it in. I don't think. The Mark. state might have put that in or something. No, but it was a lot. And uh, what did it? So say? I just thought I'd mention it. So when we come to budget time, I mean. Yeah, we've never. I think we should just slash that one. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, uh, Welcher the Kelly movie. Park. Yeah. Welch Park. That was, <coughs> sorry, Shady Real Road. <coughs> Four three three. That's Rumney. Yeah. But how often in the, they were? How often are they? <coughs> They're expensive. One hundred seventy eight a month. Yeah. Um, 100, a month? <coughs> Sorry, I don't have for a little bit of on something. But that's every time they come <coughs> empty it, isn't it? It's not per month, or is that? No, no it's like just per month. Fee. Once oh, a month. month. No, it looked month. like a monthly fee to me when I looked at it. So at seventeen forty-five, I mean, it's yeah. almost $600 a month that we're paying for. <coughs> well, it looks like we were, like, so fast due, too. I mean, it just seemed like a okay, horrible expense. I'm not. So, so there's one Depends at Welch on whether Park. your dad is for Joe. Wow, but still. There's there's one at Welch Park, two at Rumney, and are there others? No, I no, think that's uh, three. Only ones. Okay. But why did it add up to so much? Because it was three, three months, months from bills. July through <coughs> October. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um. I think that takes care of my laundry list. Actually, it's in November, too. Through November, Is it November 13th. Too? So, are, have we not gotten these removed? No, they must still be there. Probably you leave them there all winter. I think we should get them removed. Well, I think we should in charge of, uh, Who's Mitch. in charge of ordering those and getting them Mitch. out of there? I think they should be removed now with the yeah. weather. We don't need them there. Can we reach out to Mitch and, and ask him to have them removed? Who's going to do that? You are? I can. Be I think we should. Look, if you want me to. Because it looks like we're paying through November 13th, so that's like two weeks from now. Right. Okay. Right. <coughs> yeah, I can make a phone call to him and ask him to have him removed. Okay. That'd be great. Um, where is the um, credit card bill? Is that in here? The credit card bill is in there. Oh, okay, I just can't find it. Who is it? It was Community, First Bank, I think, or something, or something one. I don't know. It was in there. Okay. Liz, do you need a glass of water? I don't know. <laughs> it's like I've got dust death. caught in my throat. You're all set? No, it's not that's all I had. I don't know if okay. you got a question. Look at you, put your mask on. I, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm choking on some <laughs> dust. I'm <laughs> the mask. Oh my God. <laughs> I know I should put my mask on, too. I don't have one. Uh, all right. How are we doing with budget um, appointments? I haven't gotten anything well, except $500. Fire department is coming next week, next First time, bank. and the, um, um, I don't see it. And then the the highway department is going to be the first week of December, and I think I got a request for a request for the fire department to be and, uh, yeah, they usually just send us yeah. pretty simple. Yeah, they don't send yeah. us anything. I've um, not had anything from the cemetery commission, despite <laughs> the request. Um, I haven't heard anything from the planning commission. They know. The, I have a question. Uh, as, as a budget committee member um, and, and the CIP and understanding what might be helpful for the board as far as uh, the budget committee coming forward with what they've been tracking on the CIP and, and upcoming expenditures. Are we, are your thoughts that we should be piping in when these individual um, 
folks come in and, and do their workshop to say, hey, the, the highway department's got an excavator that it's up this year, you know, uh, how, are we, how are we addressing that? Um, those types of things. Uh, also the conversations around, um, you know, what are we doing with that CIP? How are we moving forward with, you know, potentially funding it and all that kind of stuff? Um, should we be asking to be on the agenda? Um, I usually send you the agendas when you get to the budgeting stages. Typically, asked. yeah. So I'm, I'm just the curious. The committee participates in those in those budget discussions. So I think that is the time if 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 the organizations themselves haven't picked up what's in the CIP that's in their budget. It's absolutely. Okay. Yeah. As far as the budget committee's conversation with the board around, you know, the future of this CIP and how we fund it and all of that kind of stuff, it seems outside of some of that. And I'm wondering if that that can be, you know, an isolated agenda item through one of these. Sure. One of these. What, I would, uh, what I would suggest is let's get through the budget building process and see how. The CIP rolls out into that and how it works, and then we can have a discussion after that and say sort of the process we anticipated worked and not work. Oh, no. Okay. I, I, that's what makes sense to me, Randy. Is, is let's um, let's follow through and make sure we we include it in in this year's budget process, which I had on my list, and I know you've had it on your radar screen to make sure that those items get included, and not only. And not only this year's items, but say, oh, by the way, remember next year's the year for the, you know, whatever it is. Um, and we've got a bunch of stuff in there about the town hall. You know, it's going to be yeah. hard to do much with that. But in terms of, the, you know, we already know we've got the server on our on our uh, radar screen, and I'm sure there are other things as well. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it seems like you know having a. a a block of time on one of those agendas just for the budget committee to talk about that process or the the future of that and what it looks like i think because i i think that could take up a significant amount of time okay um yeah. and I'd, I'd hate to hijack somebody else's time in front of the board talking about their workshop uh, and how that works so yeah um if we can make well, sure we, to just we add typically, that means, typically so. we have you know once once we get through the budget and get through some of our other year-end stuff. There's a, a little mini quiet zone before town meeting where we don't have a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so that's, I'm actually thinking about like like things that will impact how we put together that budget with the CIP, and not just the process. Oh, okay. Well, then we not need just to do it the process. Okay. But we, we need to do it to, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay. So not just the process, but actually talking about the future of how we fund that and and how we, you know. How, how the board looks at the future of that. You know, we're a year into this process. You know, we'd like to talk about what we've been doing thus far, but at the end of the day, the board needs to choose how they're gonna fund those activities. We can put everything on paper, we can plan it out, but it needs to be included on somewhat of an individual basis with, you know, the, the highway department coming forward and, and our efforts with those guys prior to the budget workshops, making, making sure all that's in there. But then there are other things that, you know, whether it's, you know, so building a building fund or, or saying, hey, you know, we want to create an opportunity fund to, to fund this CIP got, or whatever, got, so. Got a, I mean, one of the big, parts of the CIP for me is knowing what's coming at us down the road. And, you know, we're now going to have, have that for the first time and then think about, obviously, where the money's going to come from to pay for that. Like, are we going to continue to buy our trucks the way we have been with debt? Are we going to re-implement a sinking fund where we build up a fund of money to pay? You know, all those, all those questions about how we do that, I think, are, uh, are fair game, especially in a especially in a situation where interest rates are certainly on the rise. I mean, where we've had cheap money for a long time, it's now not going to be so cheap. So, Randy, would it work after, you know, all the departments have done their budget proposals, but before we finalize the budget, to then have that discussion about how does the, you know, the, the CIP piece fit in um, so the board then has an opportunity to take that into account before finalizing budget. 
Yeah, I think so. I think it's a combination of the two, right? So yeah, the budget committee would, in my mind, would sit in on the workshops like like the past has, yeah. you know, and and like take the highway department for example, you know, if they had that excavator in there and they they didn't bring it up in their budget discussions, the budget committee could then say, okay, well, as a reminder, we have this. What are the thoughts on that? How do we how do we envision that? But after that. I think after those individual workshops yes. are put together, I think that's what we I'm could thinking. have that that's conversation where we say, yeah. okay, this is where <coughs> everything that we have to do lands. How do we how do we incorporate all right. you know all of that CIP process stuff and yep. and I know that there are discussions around how that all shakes out because it's new for us um, and it's just no yeah yep. so yep. just understanding and and making sure we're on the radar and. It's not a wasted effort, right? Because really, this could, yeah. this can be a good thing. Absolutely, you know, we've put a lot of effort into it thus far. <clears throat> if we don't follow through with it, yeah, right. wasted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Would it would it make sense to meet prior to a select board meeting with just the budget committee? So I think you know that, that some of what the effort that we were doing when we were meeting with everybody, like our meeting yeah. prior to this, yeah. was to say, what's here's what's on here. Mm -hmm. Here's here's what isn't on there that you think should be on there. What we haven't seen is the the we we've, we've provided people with the forms. We haven't seen any forms actually be brought to the budget committee outside of this because it's still new, right? So um, the vision I should, is I should do one, but go ahead. The the vision is is that if tomorrow something pops up into your head or you and Victor are talking and hey we've got a we've got a spend this much money or we want to buy this and we know it's got a five-year life cycle and it's more than it meets all the criteria right mm -hmm. the idea is that they're going to fill that form out submit it to uh through that cip process and we add it to and then it comes back up in, in these types of conversations yes yeah, what's just the, fill out a form. When, when do we hear about that, Grant? I don't know. I gotta check in with him. I, I don't. I don't. I don't remember seeing the uh, when it was gonna be awarded. The date for that. And I'll have to go back and check the paperwork. Um, and for the time being, I'm thinking of utilizing the Greater Bay for salt because we have no place to cover it. I already forgot that. Oh, wow. So that would mean the greater lives outside. We have to have we have to have it somewhere, and we have to have it on something where it's not on the ground, like where it could leach. An impervious the surface. Does it get used in the winter? The greater? Not really. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you can put the salt in the old fire department behind town hall. I looked at that, but I don't think the doors are big enough for them to dump it in. <laughs> They probably won't be able to dump much now, it doesn't, as it is, but at least they can get it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know anything about this, but doesn't doesn't salt absorb water? Is that potentially going to create some kind of a problem in the building? Well, no. It'll eat away that concrete slab. Well, it's, there's not much to it anyway. And we have we have <laughs> it's those a metal waste buildings. blocks. Yeah. <laughs> we have the, the concrete waste blocks that we have down that back. I can make a three-sided wall inside the building. To scoop against, so you're not going against the walls. I don't know where else to put it. And we can't put it on a on a tarp on the ground. That doesn't pass the scent test. Well, no, you got no way of getting in the truck. Right. Because you so where, scoop it up with the What are other towns doing? Do we know? I mean, they must all be in the same situation we're in. Well, no, they have salt sheds. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, they do. The other towns all have salt sheds, and we don't. As far as I know. Right. Shame on us. I'm sorry, what? We're always behind the eight ball. Apparently. Yeah. Really? All the other towns have salt sheds? To my knowledge. Wow. The ones we I did salt. not know that. I mean, in order to have salt, you have to have a place to store it. Oh, the deal was, the deal was, we, we were weren't. Buying it down right, here. right, right, right. We, we were, were just going and picking it up. Yep. Right. And, and there's no continuing that process? Nope. Why not? Because Barrett's bought out. Newtons, and they do not allow that. Do you mix the salt with the sand? No. No. <clears throat> How does they the sand not freeze? It. So if we went to them and said, hey, 
Yeah. We need you to do this rates. one more year. We're willing to pay. They wouldn't consider it. No. Training well. No, it has to do with yeah. with their their, their contract to through Cargill. Car yeah. They have to deliver it. So have them deliver it to the sovereign. Have them deliver it to themselves. Go out of the park and pull around the truck. Here, I'll give you the I mean, that's just too bad. I don't want to pay three mile bridge. I just, yeah. We, we tried in Colchester, we tried getting them when we were low on salt. Can we just go pick it up? Nope. And we bought a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. The state wouldn't even, they wouldn't even let the state do it. The state buys a lot of salt. Wow. Huh. Nobody else that would. And it's not a matter of it's not a matter of having somebody loading the vehicles. They don't want vehicles transporting out of there. Correct. That aren't their trucks. Correct. Okay. It's a contract issue, with on their own. And is that because they're afraid of the liability liability somehow? It's, I'm not sure. It's, you get it on it's a bunch just of money. I won't say it. it. I I was. It's yeah. Like, it's yeah, it's. Basically, to prevent them from using other folks to transport, to transport. so it's guaranteeing somebody else, you know, oh. the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, they're they're in they're in or in uh, they're they're uh, salts delivered by train, right? Whereas yes. in the northern part of the state, they they truck it out of Montreal, right? The only other thing I can see us doing is I don't know if it would happen in time is is putting a asphalt pad down with those waste blocks and then covering it with a tarp. That sounds like a lot of tarps. Mm -hmm. Don't know anybody with a big building that wants to rent it, do you? No. <laughs> I mean, How many tons of salt is it at any given time? 200 yards. Well, they use... Uh, That's a we've, lot. In the past, we've used about 180 tons. A lot of Throughout salt. the winter. It's a lot of salt. You don't need it all at once, but... But, yeah. Uh, Logistically, what do you, how much would you need to store at one point in time to make it still a, still somewhat efficient, but not having to? They would have to deliver probably one or two tandem truckloads every time. I would want to have at least that much on so that we can go out several times through a storm. So, just just going back to your previous comment, because that's what I was trying to think about is if we know we've got to build this salt shed which we know, and we know where we're going to put it. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it make sense? How long is the Gat Falls plant going to be open? Another month? Yeah, we'd have to get somebody to come in and do it, that's all. I don't know if the availability of someone to pay that. You and your little roller. Yeah. You paid that right. whole road you don't know how to do a salt shed. <laughs> come on. If you could do center road, you should yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. We should have had them come. Well. Well, it's just, it's just a, I, I just, the idea of putting all that salt inside that building just seems like a bad it idea does. to me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So if it's, if it's our only option, it's our only option. But if, if we know that we're going to need to put this asphalt pad down for the salt shed anyway, I know tarps aren't the greatest thing in the world, but I also know they can work. And if that... I mean, it would be a worst yeah, I mean, Every time it's snow, we have to install off the drip. No, no, no. I, you I, can I understand. It could be done. I, I guess all I'm, I'm suggesting, and I don't know how you feel about this, Victor, or other, other board members, is I'd look into it and see if there's any chance can, that somebody could do I, it. Bet how big of a pack? Well, I would, I would like to say at least 50 by 50. What about, you, you, you said you did look at that building, but is there a possibility of like... The doors are low. Well, oh, they're too low. I was going to yeah. say that we do something like build a tent over it. How thick of a pat? I would say three, four inches anyway. I mean, you what what about the fire department? I was, I was, what's that? Toggling between four and six. I'm not sure what, yeah. what it takes to, to yeah, do that. You're going to be back, and you're going to be back. You know, you're going to be mean, driving maybe loaders it's, over it's, it. You're going to be driving I, mean, I can talk to, I can talk to the contractor. I mean, they're the experts, not me. Yeah. I would say how fit that proposition does this summer to pay? I don't know if we want to, was it P and something? P and G? I think there's an outfit out, out there, P and G paving. I can check around. Yeah. You got R and G. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of, maybe. Well, the building, I, 
we have, we just got to have give the go ahead to do it. But it takes 16 weeks to order the building, so it doesn't it's matter that, anyway. Yeah. So you're getting a ready-made building. Mm -hmm. Okay. But all I'm saying is, if there was a chance that we could get the pad in that would suit the building, and not have to fill our so hole. So how is that any different? Because the other thing I don't like our... is, and I know it's covered. Yeah, but I mean, how is it any different than putting it into our shed? Because or it's, it's on top shed. of a foundation. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about the Middlesex Fire Department? Can they keep their other truck? Would it fit in there? <laughs> yeah. the same building. No, I meant the one up by Romney. I know. That's the one he's talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what we're talking about. And we're going to just tear it down anyway, so it really doesn't matter if it gets. There isn't will, someone here who has an empty barn. I, I, I don't know if so it, we can rent. You're probably right. You can't get anybody in time, and the plant's going to close down and whatever. And That's my concern. I just. Uh, Salt is wicked, salt is wicked bad stuff. I hate to have it in our building. No, put it in uh, where the grader is, wow. in the fire fire station, the left hand side. Oh, okay. Okay. Turn, put concrete that. blocks around the inside. Building. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they're closing the plants on the 15th of uh, November. Yeah. Today's what, the third? Second? <laughs> Huh? Tastes so yeah, you gotta make it happen yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not the what end of the world to have order. snow falling in, on the grader. No, ours is never covered up. Okay. Mm. Yeah, and it isn't. It isn't heated anyway. I mean, I you know. Yeah. Right. Keeps the sun off it so the paint doesn't fade. That's right. That's I important. Mean, then, then, yeah, I I just soon not have it on, out. I guess if you have to buy a tarp, it is. It is. A tarp. giant tarp for the grader. The grader, the grader won't fit in over here, right? Oh gosh, too long, to too high, too tall. Yeah. What else is on the agenda? I think that's what? it. We're almost there. Okay. We're almost there. I'm going to move along with the kind of do. Yeah, she's, she, um. See, if we're on Zoom, we wouldn't have this problem. Oh, We'd be out of here. If Liz was running the meeting, we'd be out of here. <laughs> you could say it, Liz. <laughs> we need to approve the minutes of the October 18th, 22 meeting. Is there a motion? October 18th. Um, so moved. I'll second. Moved by Vic, seconded by Liz. And Phil abstains. Right. Yep. yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstention. Orders were, were signing away. Any other matters to come before the, come before the board? I still have to sign. Was there only one thing to sign, Dorinda? That's all I found was one. Two. No, there's okay, two. Where, it's a payroll one. I looked for the payroll one. Where the heck is it? We'll just I had a hard time the finding it. The checks are attached, was attached. So unless they got taken off. Okay, here they are. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I got one in my pocket. Hey, sir. <laughs> what? A paycheck? That's Thank you, everyone. Uh, are we going to talk You don't get direct that? deposit? What's that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Direct I'm sorry. Here? No. No, no, no. I meant I took one of those. Thank oh. you. Very much. I'll, I'll, I was going to forge it. Okay. Just, just for a few bucks. Yeah. Phil. Yeah. Easement. We're going to do it next time. We didn't warrant it, so let's just do it next time. Okay. Don't be fine. I'll send it out to you guys tonight. Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, we are adjourned. Yay.